to do so in owl no i think it was mirror it was my former it was my former tank on washington justice right it was mirror on ellie gladiators it, 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 it was not mirror he was really? uh yeah, oddly oh, enough, wow. it was not. Uh, we did think it was him. Hey, yo. Uh, we consulted AI about that. I don't know if we we're back. Ready in time, so I'm trying to yap and stretch up. We back with stream back. number two. But I consulted our AI overlords in the mighty interwebs, and uh, they spouted out a name. Uh, Mitch, do you want to have a guess? Rose, uh, I guess. Uh, Andre, that uh, Discord. I peaked, so like I cheated. Is technically so I oh, can't you say peaked. Anything. Okay, yeah. Okay, Rose, Rose knows. Rose knows. I, I'm just gonna drop it, graphic or not. It was Costa. Out of all people. Oh wow. <laughs> I know. Uh, Wait, when goodness, when you I'm, the someone uh, tracer master class. I caught a bit of it. <laughs> went through something, I think there. So Costa had to go through it with them. Right, uh, well, that's it. Some trivia to end it all. Danny, thank you so much for joining us. Best of luck uh, in the main event. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, now that the silliness is out of the way, we can get into hopefully some good matches today. According to the sources that probably have more knowledge and capability and capacity than we did. I didn't think so either. I, I just, I typed it in. I did not expect Bro, that reply. they didn't even all. let him play support at some point for that team. How did he get to play two other roles? They, what? they went through something. They Everybody through quite at something. Custa on social media. He has that accolade. It's like the only accolade this man has, but what? we want to give it to him. I, huh. <laughs> I mean, no, he has the most amount of cosmetic ults used in the Overwatch League as well. Like purely just for the visual effects, yeah. Yeah, he's got a real eye for, he's got a real flair for sort of design and, and uh, creating a great... Danny Torb one hard. Yeah, it's, that's some disrespect to play your analyst <laughs> on DPS. That's some crazy stuff right there. let you and everyone else watching celebrate Custis' achievement as we're heading into a quick break. When we're coming back, we're going to take a look at the winner's match of Group B, Timeless versus Luminosity. You don't want to miss it. I'm excited for Timeless versus Luminosity, though. Always fun to watch Dante. And my boys, my Timeless boys are playing again. Let's go. Uh, let me start a poll for you, chat. Timeless versus... Luminosity. I'm hoping to just see Luminosity put up some kind of fight. They did take one map in the Swiss against them. since I kept up with Overwatch Esports, anything new? I mean, OWCS is where it's at right now. That's about it. Not much else as of right now. There's like the Face It um, World Cup thing that's going to happen. The Face It tournament and the Esports World Cup. That That's really kind of far off. We don't know that much yet still. It'd be epic if Luminosity got an upset today, but Timeless are seen as the clear-cut number two right now in NA, I think, by most people, at least until Pelican and Happy get to America, whenever that may be, if ever. I'm giving- I'm gonna give Luminosity a map, because I- I- while I do really like Timeless a lot, I don't think they're invincible. And I mean, for because Luminosity got a map against them in the Swiss, why not? Why not give them a map? I'm praying for a good game, though. I want to see Dante and, and the boys ball out today. They'll get here at least by the time of Dallas. Well, that's good to hear. I 
I don't know, I feel like right now where the meta is at, I think it's good for Timeless. I think it's their time to shine as a top level NA team. Not that it means that much from a international perspective, but yeah. Timeless do have a lot of messy wins, so you never know. You never know when they're going to have a close game. I think this one could be somewhat good. I don't think it'll be a sweep. That is my pred. No sweep. But I really like that Timeless DPS trio. It's really strong. They seem like they're rather comfortable on like Arisa compositions and stuff. I, I like where Timeless is at as a team right now. This is a good way to see where they're at, though, because they have had a lot of really close calls. Wonder Team Tree will join in Stage 3. Yeah, that's a good question. That could be a game changer for North America wherever he lands. Uh, I believe tomorrow, Math. Let me double check for you. I don't know for certain. Larry, where are they? Where are they? Oh no, I'm sorry. Next week. They play next week. Unfortunate. Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what Zoe meant by Custa playing all three the first player ever to play all three roles in Overwatch League. I mean like I'm trying to think about it. Right? We know he's played support. Um he might have played like some hog on Dallas, maybe, but I don't remember that. I think that they're really well positioned. Like maybe DPS in like the all-star game. Yeah, it feels like it should be mirror, but I, I'm trying to see if like Zoe's on to something there. I'm pretty sure mirror is, but like Zoe said, it's Custa. Like it, it, it's technically possible. I feel like it's not true, but hydration, Flitta, Profit. Group stage and main event, and take it straight into post rollock. No secret, they didn't have to make any changes when they were just so good in that first main stage as well, being able to grab that second place. But even just taking a look at how Chopper and Rocket as a DPS duo, hydration's a good shout. Astounding, they have been touted as one of the best up and coming DPS pairs for North America. And we get I know he played some Brigida and he played DPS. He played Roadhog as well. This is a team that also remains Yeah, I don't really know. It actually would be interesting to look back and see what the true answer to that trivia question is. Because there's quite a few people technically that like played all three roles in season one. Agilities played like Hog, Zarya, Brig, and DPS in season one. Like it really depends on what we're talking about. Fleta's done it all. Profit's done it all. Season one, you have to remember, DPS were playing a little of everything. I'd be curious to see who truly was the first. Kind of surprised that this team is only getting the fourth place results, Rose. Like, looking at the strength of this roster and how good they are at playing like the Winston Tracer hitscan comps. Why does Luminosity get first pick? Oh, I have no idea. Timeless are a higher seed, so that's weird. These guys have as much experience, if not more, than Timeless does. It's about manifesting that in results. They've not been able to do so far. 
I mean, Zoe also did say that that was something that AI told her, so maybe she just Googled it and hoped that the right answer would come up. Or she's trolling. Toronto played all three roles. True. Alright, let's see what Luminosity's got for us. I remember that they played Time Listen in uh, groups, or not groups, sorry, Swiss, the qualifiers, and it was a decent game. So I have hope. Last time these two met up, it was not a good game, and Luminosity got thoroughly crushed. Why he was sort of moved off the roster that he started playing tank on. Uh, there was a lot of controversy about that because he was a, he was a, a, a standout for that team. On to Samoa though. Luminosity here. Oh, that's some kind of overextension there. There's really nothing that Squid could do to help. Happy to see Juby again. Yeah, Juby and Dante reunited. Luminosity really does have a likable team. Dante Jubil, I love King. I think Vision's a pretty underrated NA hit scan as well. You have CJ playing the Kiriko versus Squid on the Baptiste. Both of those heroes, of course, can provide a ton of healing output. But when we take a look at the Kiriko and what they're able to provide, it's got to be some kind of 2018 player. If we're going strictly off of that criteria with like nothing else, no other strings. Yeah, having a cooldown that can basically cancel out an ultimate uh, and being able to do that regularly basically shuts down like the lion's share of Trace's impact at least. You know, I like both of these teams a lot. Timeless are my NA boys. I, I'm a fan, but Luminosity definitely hold a special place in my hearts as well. Vision spending much of his time flanking. Job being done by the rest of his team and he'll get involved by removing the Tracer. And that's one way you can really bring yourself back. You know, there's actually a possibility Time who played all three roles. I don't know if he ever played Brig for like a second in like stage four of 2018 that year. I'd have to look back at all the games. Probably not, but technically possible. I know he played Brig after in 2018 World Cup, but I'm not entirely sure about Owl. Do I know I still competing in OWCS? Probably. Oh, Icy's getting bullied. Oh, I need to hit that pulse though. Th those Jade guns trip me up. I always feel like I'm looking at Vancouver Titans weapons. Super has played all three roles. Yes, that is true. Never forget the Super Zen. Never forget. Only real ones remember when Super played Zen against Jonak. What a Chad. The top five slash ten players who played all roles. That'd make for an interesting video. All players who played every role at some point in Owl. Or what about like players that swapped roles? That in itself could make for a fun kind of video. Because some people like genuinely swapped roles entirely in their careers. Mirror is a Chad because he played all three roles in a single game. Like that's next level right there. Yeah, Bumper is a good one. He played main support. He played off tank, he played main tank, and he played some DPS for memes on Vancouver those few times. Bumper's been around, that's for sure. Glad he hit her legend Dante. Ah, yes. Yeah, alarm for main tank to flex support is a good pull as well. Ultimate looks very, very solid from them. 
I think Chopper coming in from the top rope. Uh, you know, with some key overclocks there, really swung. Young Jin had a very weird heal, pure poor. Okay, we are sneaky beaky like here. Maybe hoping to catch someone overextended, maybe even a tracer. Give her a energy javelin and follow up, but Luminosity just spot this out and now we'll have a neutral plate in this reactive room. Dante's so low though. He needs to get topped up before. I'm sure Dante's played some Brig at some point. Dante a little low. Rocket though takes a I remember the architect Donna. <laughs> Violet as well, yeah, of course. Shout out to that one week when Shock played Architect on Anna. Good times. Really great wrap around there from Luminosity as well. While we ended up seeing Rocket try to take an off angle from Timeless, the rest of Luminosity were just walking into that Timeless front line. It brought so much space for King to be able to just grab those picks. And a nice disengage here as well here for Luminosity to try to play around this corner. I see looking for a way in here. Or at least a way to create some space to send Rocket on a flank. Rocket playing the point right now from the left hand side. Javelin's been used by Dante here, but he's taken a fair bit of damage. The app matrix though is going to allow Luminosity to force Timeless back. They are wrapped around the corner. Prime Architect was a magnificent player. What a shame. It's a shame the shock were just so loaded. Because Prime Architect 2018 to 2019 was such a great player, man. I thought 2018, when I watched Architect play, he was going to be the next big thing. He was so good when he joined Owl at the star. Oh my god. Actually was carrying. Bro was good at everything. Far up. Widowmaker. Genji. He was just nasty. Prime Gnome here. Prime Bumper. Oh, Mega Wool. I mean, I do love Nomi, I will say. There's always going to be a tough fight there for Luminosity to win when you have that Kitsune Rush that gives so much extra mobility to the rest of the Timeless squad. And on top of that, too, with the Sound Bear ready to get the trigger pulled, you're just going to be a little bit too beefy to actually take out. So Luminosity, they did the smart thing. They expended a couple of DPS ultimates, but ultimately they... Architect was awesome, man. So they can come I miss him. Rocket. More than happy to shelter within the terror search for the time being. Sound barrier comes out. Whiff. Hey, yo. Luminosity DPS showing up. Vision and King. Okay. Luminosity. This is a very comfortable fight win for them after the fact. And, you know, Kachina Rush is so powerful. It's not just like the mobility, but it's also survivability because Orisa's cooldowns get refreshed so much quicker. Two of her cooldowns, of course, are defensive. So it's really hard to, like, fight on even footing when she's, like, fortifying you know, twice as often and having so much ability to break damage up with Javelin Spin. Yeah, and she also just, like, shoots. Uh, that does a ton of damage. Like, uh, Arissa's damage output is nothing to be underestimated, but it's time here to see what Chopper can do with this overclock. Chopper kind of in an awkward position. Okay. That overclock, we might see Chopper try and take some more space. Stop. To make use of uh, <laughs> that window is not great. <laughs> Still a one for one though. Hey yo! Hey yo! Squid! He's crazy with it! And that should be the round for Luminosity, alright! Insane stuff, okay. They're popping off! Looked really clean from them. Is the Again, old like, runaway team, team playing in OWCS? No. They tried. They, um, a couple of their guys tried. Like, if you mean the old, old runaway, Bumper and Hawksall, they tried to qualify in Korea with Ryu J. Hong. So, Luminosity really showing us a much better look. But does that change at all when we go... They didn't make it, though. We head over to Beach, because that is where we saw... They failed. Struggle. They did not make it past the qualifier. Which is understandable. Because, like, they're old and washed now, unfortunately. A little bit more than Volcano, as it can be hard to find value outside of those disrupt the shot niche plays. Yeah, their team has been... We have a switch over towards Ash for Vision, so they themselves don't feel particularly comfortable with Cassidy's effective range on a map like this. They definitely fancy punishing the grouping up of Timeless with some of these dynamites. Exhibit A. 
Vision will be thrown back here for a time, but oh yeah i love jay hong we stand jay hong in the og players i always respect them it's gonna be the tracers too that are gonna be duking it out by the back of this point so pay attention to how close these health bars drop especially chopper okay okay i mean that's kind of ambitious from chopper and he just got coach gunned just so vision could pick them off king also I miss the old days. You guys are getting me all nostalgic. Architect in his prime. Jay Hong. Jay Hong in, in the second season of Owl. 2019, like the Soul Dynasty Redemption team. I have some fond memories of that team. It was a cool story. They didn't win any playoff games, but there are a lot of cool moments for that team. Making the playoffs after failing the year before. Upsetting New York in that stage one game. Finally overcoming them in London Spitfire. Sure foreign team Canada, yeah. Canada had a good run, 2017 and 2018, back-to-back -back metal years. He got hammered there by Vision. Beautiful headshot. And this ash is That's because in their primes, you know, that the earlier years of Overwatch, Canada had some of the better Western talent. Really great job of is it forces you to have to back away and sometimes into a disadvantageous position, like below point where you are out of the I love the sure for agility's DPS line, man. What a classic. Uh, no, just, just Dante, I believe, Adam. At least for the time being. You never know. Things could change. Some other godly tank player decides to come to, um, Maryville. This will allow Timeless to immediately transition over to the point. And only at the cost of sure for I just saw he's been streaming some Overwatch lately. I actually tuned to one into one of his streams like a week or two ago. He's still grinding Overwatch from time to time, which is awesome. I always enjoyed Sure for streams. They're very chill. I'm pretty sure he's been playing a fair bit of Overwatch recently. On the drop down, but again, a little bit out of line of sight of some of that healing. You can see the opener getting thrown at the Arisa. Must be able to stay alive for now. There's the Suzu. I did math. <laughs> okay, here we go. The Terra Surge is good. And that should be a Luminosity round one victory, unless they are able to get a solid contest here. But. It's not going to be pretty. They do have ults, but this is not going to be pretty if they're actually able to even get there. Uh, can they even get there? Opener's going to try. He's got a touch. It's got to be on him. Nope. Luminosity taking map one. That we've seen between these two teams in the past and actually get a key map win at the start of this. I miss Calvin, man. We highlighted as one that could show the fruits of their labor over the last few weeks, month or so since that stage one. This is a great looks from the underdog team. Yeah, not only have they had a couple more weeks to be able to get that synergy together, but they also have such a huge test of strength right now to really show people what they are made of. And I think that that warm-up match might have had a little bit of a hand in it, like even though it is- Oh, I see. Really that comment that Zoe made before chat, she was spreading misinformation on purpose. She did a chat GPT thing. This has to be fake. Look at the chat. Wait. Like, come on, man. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah, I've seen Calvin spend streaming a bit from time to time now again. Which makes me happy because I love his streams. 
She still has armor. Calvin's so like, chill. Like, that's when you start to get ghastly. It's like, okay, now, like, the, the, the next step of this is when they say Orisa literally won. When she's Peak the Calvin the streams back, back in the day. Oh, man. That's what the Tracer Early Overwatch like. days. She wasn't one. Well, now she really is one because you attached a pulse bomb. Of course, Kian. That's a classic. I can actually pick her out. Right. I mean, I appreciate the mental gymnastics you're trying to pull off there, but again, you can hear like how how big up how a huge part of the calling Dante is, right? We don't always have like the main tank just because their field of view is basically trained on the other tank and at the front of the fight. They can't see flankers as easy. He is really involved. So you have put a veteran player in a position to to impart a lot of that experience, you know, in real time. And it makes a big difference. This Luminosity team, remember last time these two teams played, it, it wasn't really close. And this team also, they drop a map to Citrus Nation, who are a, a pretty decent team in their own right. But a win here for Luminosity not only guarantees that they get out of the group in first place, uh, it also starts... You think Dante's the most sex successful role swap in Pro Overwatch? Uh, he's got to be up there. I mean, there's... I'd say Violet, personally. I mean, it depends on what you mean, I guess. If you mean, like, full-on, like, to a completely different role in its entirety, then, yeah, then it's probably Dante. Kareev's a good one, but I'd say Dante's been more successful as an individual player than Kareev at this point. Alarm? Yeah, and Alarm might be the best one of all. To, to be honest, going from tank to the, one of the best flex supports of all time is kind of crazy. Out of the epicenter before the tsunami comes crashing in. But it's a great point, right? It does, it reduces some of the, the coaching load, I think, and it gives you a bit of a buffer to really start to formulate your approach. Mirror's always kind of been the flex guy. He's been somewhat successful on tank. Hey, Lunar. I'm doing pretty good. Look particularly close. Like, they are really well drilled. The Ash pick from Vision comes alive in that last... Hot but Well, Hot Bud technically was always just an off tank, you know? so nice. Because it's consistent DPS. You've got the dynamite, so it's also going to force... Reiner... I didn't even know Reiner played DPS before going to tank. I learned something new today. That's a pick. You don't have to wait for that real gun to get charged up, hit the head, and even if you do, the real gun charge damage right now. Oh yeah, would you look at that? His Liquipedia page. Oh, he actually played DPS for a couple of years before becoming a tank player, huh? Very interesting. No, not not at all. I mean, we also saw just like the ability to interrupt any potential. Ryder played DPS for one, two, three, four, five, like it's like seven to eight teams. He was on XL2 Academy as a DPS. I never knew this. Was really important. You know, we I don't really have. Bro, XL2 Academy had so many different players. XL2 Academy had Nene, they had Flower, Bianca, Gig, KSP, now known as Kai. Yaki was on XL2 Academy. Tizzy, Who Y'all, Clone Man, Mangachu, Logix. <laughs> what an insane lineup of players. Okay, yeah, I, I love to see this because maybe we Hoppo is originally a tracer player. I had no idea. Flex support lineup here. We know that Lucamino is super, super gifted at that baptism. It makes sense why he'd play tracer and owl then, I guess. Sunjun and Riker subbed in. really nice, but for timeless. It's gonna be a double sub here, Uber. We've got Riker now coming in here for ice. Is going from player to coach count with the soldier. Yeah, of course, like Riker, we've seen yeah on more of the dive tanks uh, in the past. Uh, even you know this potential down the line that we get to see his his wrecking ball come back out. So that's something well worth looking forward to. If we're talking like seriously, like one role to a different one, on this map. I feel like this it's alarm for me. Again, very much Can never view Yaki the same after watching uncoachable nonstop. Yeah, it's funny. To get in the game in a big way. I don't know to what degree Luminosity have been able to go back and workshop this. Ooh, I can waltz. But this might be the weakest point in the map pool in general. I enjoy this map. Oh, I say that in that map I'm excited. I'm excited. in the roster playing the Lucio with this dive. So maybe it isn't going to be the dive that they bring to the table this time when we did see a sub into that support slot. So that's why I think maybe we see the double flex 
Maybe we see a bit more of the Arissa. Dante has looked so good on that hero so far. And it could also be that you continue to see uh, the Winston, but maybe with a bit of a different look that the Lucio can't really provide you. Let it be known a vast ranked Yaki, the number four DPS player all time in Overwatch 1. That's actually insane, by the way. Number four. And like, don't get me wrong, Yaki in Overwatch 1 was solid, but... Come on, man. That's insane to put him that high. 2020 Prime Yaki was a spectacle, but yeah, that's some unreal levels of copium. I like to defend Yaki usually, but I, I, that's just, I can't justify defending him. Shout out to Sun Jun with the Philly Widow skin. The direct deposit from Mayhem. Yaki Tracer at his peak was great for the time, but yeah, if we're talking all time, he doesn't really reach that mark. Prime Yaki Tracer was nutty though. I remember him booming Philly in that first stage in May Melee. Holy, that was a that was one heck of a game he had. He could play a mean echo too back then. Just point. The more things change, the more they stay the same. That is a com that has withstood the test of time. But we got a chance to actually hear the, the setup there for Timeless on the dive and the execution of it there. Pretty clean comms and uh, Sonja racking up those kills. Both roles are just flex. Uh, I'm not sure. 2020 Axie and Sanguinar. Throwback. Wait, is Dante have the, Wait, is that a 2018 Shock skin? Based? Dante with the shock roots for Winston, learning from Nomi. Same thing with Squid. If you're able to just dodge the shield bash, then that's not a bad target to have either. But yeah, Carpe's Tracer was just like fine. I feel like after 2018, it wasn't that good. And that's coming from a Carpe lover. Ooh, that was close. Oh my god, raid boss, raid boss, squid raid boss incoming. Oh. Pretty good so far, Wookie. They took map one, the DPS were popping off. Vision and King were putting in the work. Also, oh wait, Dante wants to try and turn this. I guess it's mostly to survive. <laughs> Probably not ideal. Dante did say season one shock with his dream team. I love that shock team. I know they were irrelevant for about three quarters of the season. Well, probably at least half, I should say. But I loved that team. Probably one of my favorite shock teams. Like they had everyone. Yeah, the, all those up and coming players. Architect and Choi were getting their start. Super. And I loved Nomi. Nomi was my guy. Immortals Roots. Moth was coming into the league. Sleepy. Baby Bay. Like, what a squad, man. Nevix. They're able to get this car really close to the finish line, but not before they're going to be able to get their reinforcements back. Luminosity is a team of five. Try to walk up on this bridge. King having this pulse bomb as well. I think part of it was they weren't entirely ready yet. Maybe coaching could have played a part of it, but I think the shock weren't quite ready. They were playing basically for the future. I think they made that pretty clear, knowing that some of the main players they signed weren't 18 until like halfway through the year. Making sure he gets all of his healing from Luke himself. Yeah, they're a young team trying to find their footing. They weren't complete yet. Oh no! 
Rocket with the 3k! Yeah, isn't that something? Baby Bay's casting Valorant now. The other day I saw that, I'm like, wait, does that say Baby Bay? Like, I never envisioned him being a caster. Is he any good? I have no idea. I don't really watch Valorant. Defensive style of dive play, but now you're entering into this castle phase where there's way less high ground to play around. There's way more opportunities for you to actually get this dive, but you're so close to the rally as well that you may as well just kind of play around it. I thought Baby Bay was low key and underrated Overwatch player. They're taking so much poke damage here though. Look, Luke and Vision down to half. I think Dante gonna dive back towards the rest of his team. This is uncomfortable for Luminosity. Sonjin's putting a lot of pressure on them. Okay, I like the bionade here, but Sonjin doesn't seem to be bothered by it. Until well, honestly, signing Dak in general was a horrible idea. Dak was a master's player. <laughs> that guy was, yeah. Watching him play Mercy was something. I thought Baby Bay was always really good. Even on Shock in 2018, I've talked about this. A while back, I watched back some of those old Shock games to see if they were bad as I remember. But... Baby Bay usually played well, even in like stage one when Shock were really sucking. Baby Bay held his own. He had some good moments. It's it kind of makes me sad that he retired mid-season that year on Atlanta, because I thought Baby Bay was having the best season of his career in professional Overwatch. That 2020 season before he called it quits. I thought that was the best he'd ever looked. That he's like, eh, I'm out of here. Bro left on top. Oh my god, Dante's getting pummeled. Even through all that, the rain persevered. Kind of. Things got better. 2021, they made a finals, which is cool. The showdown he had with Ants, yeah. Baby Bay had showdowns with a lot of players, like you wouldn't expect him to. Yeah, Baby Bay and Dante were low key pretty good on DPS. And I also thought Sleepy was pretty underrated at the time on Zen. It just, all the pieces weren't there. They're inexperienced as well. Vision's gonna, oh, I thought he was gonna go to Genji. I got excited there for a second. I mean, hey, that Briggle bought you some time. I don't know why Enlayer was on the rain. I'll be honest. Speaking of the rain, remember when they they got Edison and Sharp, and we're like, oh my god, they just won the off season. They got like two of the most sought after DPS prospects in Overwatch, and then it didn't work out with either of them. I mean, Edison was good for them, but a lot of the time he's cast aside. <laughs> Baby Bay started over him until he retired. You had Edison get benched for Kai in a lot of situations after that. I'm glad he was able to find success on Dallas for that one year at least. I thought 2020 Rain were going to be so good and they were pathetic. This is also probably the, the best. I mean, part of it also is um, Erster took a major step back and kind of like stopped caring. That's one of my favorite one season wonder players. Erster was a monster in 2019. That guy I thought was the next up and coming DPS player. And then he was just never the same. And then his career was over. It was like such a sharp decline, man. He looked nasty on everything. He could play Brig and Goats. He was a crazy doom fist. He could play Tracer. He could play May, And then done. Genji as well, even. Yurish joined Rain 2020. He was kind of splitting time with Dogman at the time. 2020 Rain was actually such a mess. Sharp, saucy, and Urser. Dude, saucy. I mean, the 
Honestly, the range dream that time probably would have been to have sugar free, but sugar free was like 14 back then. <laughs> Sad. No, like literally though. Like he was like literally 15 or 14 back then. We are charged up. No real targets presented themselves right now. As Vision probably wanted that to disrupt the shot to be on the ground, but it'll dissuade any dive for the time being. Magrade found Dante, but he had no intention of moving in that moment. Yeah, Patty Pin? Oh my god. Talk about a short-lived peak. It was his dream to come back to Overwatch. He left Valorant. He played so good on Gladiators, helped them win two stage titles, and he's just pieced out. Like, crazy stuff, dude. He was such a reliable player for them, too, man. What a tragedy. Remember Trong was a top five off tank? Yeah, he was so good. That is a very convincing fight. And I kind of wonder, you know, like, timeless opting to play a less mobile composition. One that can't really dictate the pace of play. Like Luminous. But the thing is, didn't Paddy Pen go back to Valorant? Like, Sag. At least that's what I thought I heard. It's really funny to think that he left Valorant to begin with, because he had, like, I remember people were saying, yeah, the ridiculous game of Valorant to, like, win some kind of tournament. Had a crazy game. And then he came back to Overwatch. Like, makes me think maybe he never should have left Valorant. Free damage down there for anybody. Luminosity wants to come yeah, that, that's, that might be one of the shortest peaks of all time. Like four months or whatever it was. Man. He was so damn good, though. He was so clutch. The Patty Genji and Soldier were legendary. Him and Kev just complimented each other so good. Wait, he's on Carpe's team? No way, no shot. He's he's benched on Carpe's team. Oh, he's on Talon? Gotcha. That's where he used to be, wasn't he? I know that's where he played Overwatch for a bit, at least. Yeah, I know Carpe's on T1. Him and Saya player are, are together. Which I love, by the way. Two god tier widows from 2018. Patty isn't even an active player on Talon. Rip. Yeah, Flower did have a pretty short lived peak. However, some people forget he was still a good player before World Cup. LW Blue were a pretty relevant Apex team. I need to watch some Apex, man. I missed 2016 Overwatch. 20, early 2017. Oh my god, Rocket's popping, dude. He keeps finding picks every goddamn fight. And now that they've been able to kind of stop the bleeding too, like they really have dug their heels into the sand. Oh, Luke Mina on Lucio is so cursed. Back to the shock era. <laughs> That's part of the problem with this Luminosity team. They don't have like a true main support on this roster. Juby is only really super comfortable on Lucio, clearly. They had Squid play Brig this round. Nice, Byron, nice. Sounds about right. Dude, that meta Athena team was awesome. They'd Scion Libro on that team. 
They have a sound barrier and they hate to have to spend it here. So Louis Mina finds a very cheaply found kill with that right click. Luminosity very much still in this. Thanks to Luke. Yeah, I gotta watch some old Overwatch one of these days, man. Too risky to double, triple blink across the bridge to stick it with the whole timeless lying in Like pre owl. Now they just gotta back up a Gotta bit. really relive my boomer years. Oh, Rocket is just on a tear, man. Rocket's so nasty. Now, I mean, that's another huge kill to open up a fight. Last time, I think it was uh, Luke Mino, maybe? This time, I mean, getting a stick on the Sojourner is perfect. He finds Vision unaware. And now Luminosity are down to their last 50 seconds to play. They need to make something big happen here, and it's gonna have to be potentially off of the high ground control. They'll have to fight to assume and get that overclock in play. It really would have been nice to see them get something like a eco push. Timeless looking at about four ults here. Um, I like the aggressive ult from Squid. Gotta get another quick kill here if you want this to matter, but you're not gonna kill Riker. Rip. Luminosity falling apart here, losing Dante a little bit too early just to a face full of damage. And Timeless able to exploit that player. Obviously, Another throwback stream, yeah, perhaps. Hashtag Luminosity sweep, right as Timeless take a map. Right on time, Zedis, right on time. We were kind of expecting a look at what is touted right now as the second best team in the region against the fourth in Luminosity. I think we are potentially in for a five map series but it came down to making just we'll see i mean rocket was on a goddamn tear that map king was not so existent that go around yeah like it's exciting to see that the gap between second and fourth is is not particularly wide at all i do think that i said this sort of during the round that the substitutions made all of the difference here uh you know timeless look very, very solid. I think Sonjin is able to just achieve these very high peaks that Vision sometimes threatened to reach himself on that attacking side. But so much of Eichenwald, especially second, is positional. It's about who can control the high ground and who can gain it without losing too many players. Yeah, Timeless has been good. I think part of it is just the fact that they've been waiting for their moment for a while. A lot of these guys have played together, the, the Wisp core, and a couple of Korean imports, like... This is a team that's motivated to show off. A lot of NA talents, though, in particular, that I think just needed the right situation, and now they have it, now that Al's gone. I had this feeling that they were going to be good once I saw what happened in the, uh, what's it called, the Flash Ops. I love this team, man. But I think just being able to, to play with even a bit more space created by the rest of the team... You want to meet Uber if he goes to DreamHack? being born and, and this is another dps again a dps player me when i handcuff myself to rack to get backstage <laughs> nice yeah i wish i could go man up and coming dps in the entire region so uh, great to see them really live up to that here yeah now this this sort of resets the narrative a little bit on this series we're starting to see timeless looking like themselves once more and honestly I didn't feel like this. I can build out. Ended up being that close. Maybe it's time to start betting on the lottery, chat. Cap off. I think the KD probably helps sort of, you know, uh, tell that story, but it's very contextual and we probably don't have the data we need to really tell the whole story with that. But I, I don't particularly think that, you know, Luminosity would have a hold of much of a candle. Put on a donation counter. Nah, I already asked too much with during Owl before last season. I've asked too much already. I feel bad. Dante's attempts to start fights but making the right decisions whether they were disengagements or even just getting in first especially when it came to how you fight for the high ground on second I feel like Timers had those protocols now down far more cleanly yeah, and Riker was the tank of choice that we saw Timeless use in their match versus Daybreak yesterday to get that 3-0. So it's... Rocket and Chopper is probably the best duo of around, DPS names is ever. It is a pretty sick combo, I won't lie to you. ...like the Orisa just to change things up, does have some fantastic awareness when it comes to both of those heroes to really provide to a team composition like that. And I think when you take a look at Riker's play style in the Winston 2, super... To be fair, Carpe and Diem don't... Team, play together i think that's probably that what they meant operate on its own absolutely i think we'll we might even still see a roster switch 
here just because Colosseo, of course, might be a map that demands some slightly different compositions. I see, I see you getting Colosseo subbed DPS. back in. Rocket stay in at, at DPS. Riker, of course, going to be, uh, you know, taking a seat for the time being here. So, all right. I'm, I'm definitely interested. Back to pure Lucio it is for Luminosity. Understandable. Basically a necessity uh, on these push maps, but especially Colosseo. I agree. You want to make sure that you have the mobility to be funny. Lastro, that is a pretty good one. I'm not gonna lie. To those high crowd, the bridge to play around, or even that midpoint. You gotta be able to get back to those very quickly, so you aren't giving up too much area over to your opponent. But when I think when it comes down to the substitution there of Icy and, and Riker, we have seen Icy play such an influential part of this roster to be able to come in and play things like the Sigma, like the Ramatra, uh, just more of these sort of brawl oriented heroes. Uh, that can really hold that front line. Should the Giants get a wide receiver on pick six? It's going to depend how the board falls. Now again, uh, this game up until now has if, if, the, if the top three quarterbacks are gone, which they probably will be, then yeah. If they can get Malik Neighbors at six, I'd be thrilled. Then Akavala, which Timeless managed to win. So very much how that has played out. Now the difference here is of course in the first to three has everyone an owcs played reaper yes, soldier uh, probably third map so that that game ended with a win for timeless on rialto um and so that's how they advanced actually no i think timeless they won some more and lost like so there you go i mean that's how close these two teams <laughs> are it's actually flipped from uh, how that first round matchup went but again these two teams are really familiar with each other already having yeah. to play each other in swiss and it was close in a best of three right so expect to see all right, we need to see King and Vision step it up because Rocket was running circles around them in that last map. Just I see on the Arisa right now, so maybe we're not seeing the full intent behind it revealed yet. Oh yeah, no, I don't like Daniel Jones at all. But the Giants aren't really in a situation where they can get a quarterback, it looks like, unless they're able to really trade up. It's just not going to happen. I don't want them to reach on JJ McCarthy. I'm not really... I don't like the idea of drafting him with the number six pick, so... If they can't get Drake Mayer, Jaden Daniels, which is looking like won't happen, then I'm fine with a wide receiver and then we go from there. Yeah, I know, Mammoth. And I knew it was going to happen. I knew it deep down. I knew it was going to be what exactly how things went. Because that is always what happens with the stupid Giants. They always decide that they need to win for the sake of pride because their owner is weird like that. They just tanked properly. They could be in a great place right now, but no. It's all about the battle of the midpoint. How long are we gonna be here? The classic Coliseo standoff. Suzu down. Maybe you can get some push here. Oh. Okay, so it's going to be Luminosity after a minute and a half. Territory before they were ready to actually pull the trigger, and so Luminosity able to set up that crossfire, get that pesky tracer out of the way. Uh, but not before Rocket was able to do some pretty big damage. I mean, these tracers are still going toe to toe. Uh, King able to get the pulse bomb online, but I wouldn't expect Rocket to be too far behind when coming back out of those spawn room gates. Um, so plenty of time here for Timeless to come back in and get the recontest. Luminosity are really getting up. Yeah, I mean, they thought about it. They definitely thought about it. I think they really <laughs> had more glass. Okay, that's just trolling. Also don't know much about who's on that left-hand side down there. They don't want to group up too much. Sanjun here sees a sound barrier. Maybe regrets making use of the power slide in that moment, but it's still in a safe enough place. Pretty big goal. King sees the power slide. It might be time to go here with his pulse. Maybe concerned about the Suzu as well. There's a lot of layers you have to get through his tracer, but now King's window has well and truly closed. Vision finds one, but that's all the Luminosity you're gonna get there. A nice tussle over the point, but Timeless is able to walk it back over into their own territory. Uh, Everyone will say, Blizzard, please just do this and we'll be happy. Counterpoint. Let's do something you dislike even more. <laughs> just cause. Cause we can. More glass. 
Fusion can get some high ground control. Uh, that could be very, very powerful. Rocket the looking for the pulse first. That's an ambitious pulse bomb. I mean, that's quite a statement you're trying to make there. Low connection on the pulse yeah. there from Rocket, but I appreciate the audacity. Rip. Here's that overclock the vision has been sitting on for quite some time. He will initially turn it into a kill on his opposite number. Well, that may be all for now, but Ice is in trouble. He's about to get surrounded. King actually fell to Rocket here, so at least time must have some step to this fight. But as the pendulum swings, Luminosity now have the edge once more. Starting to work their way forward means that, you know, I, I think like we're still going to see one more team fight before we do get a chance to actually push this bot over to that first checkpoint. Uh, but this fight is, is so null for both sides. You have no ultimates for anybody and, and in fact timeless they do have to wait for another player but luminosity just backing up i mean it's still a decent place to fight because you've actually forced uh you know timeless off the high ground mm -hmm. that's sort of just playing these strokes and now they're susceptible to vision sliding up there himself he's still only across the platforms right now it's gonna be a messy one perhaps shows his whole self out there in the open while healing up the sojourn okay katuna rush had to be matched here because the amount of deep time well, CJ needs a little bit of help with covering that up. A great focus fire on Adante. He's down. Sonjin eventually falls, though. Luminosity Sonjin most Sonjin certainly Sonjin. should have saved that. Uh, wait, unless, wait. Pause champ. I did not see the vision. No pun intended. If they can break the dam here, they might have themselves a checkpoint available. Open it, trying to take the fight in there towards Squid. I see. This is too messy. Moment to focus down on the Kiriko without cooldowns. Oh, you can see Rocket just barely able to get away. And so Luminosity, they've got to wait for just a little bit longer to try to grab that. Yeah, now you wish you saved that. Unlucky. It's been such a little progress on both sides. So back and forth. A really nice recognition from both teams to just back up and try to get some ults online before that last engagement. Uh, but Luminosity, they still have the ultimate advantage right now. Again, Squid gets caught. Oh, hunting Squid down. Always prophetic that moment was, but I see might be the bigger fish to fry here as King's been able to secure the Orisa pick with a pulse bomb. Dante staying alive for the time being and also should be required. Has extra defensive options in Terra Surge. Which oh, they give it up. For Rip. But you've got to turn this into something. You've got rid of the enemy Orisa. How do you go forward? Luminosity, though, making no progress in that direction. In fact, Sonjun's able to find a winner to bring Juby down. This is huge for Timeless. They lose their Orisa and still get to keep coming forward or at least. They definitely need more maps for the newer modes. I've been advocating that for a while. But instead, they're going to give us yet another game mode while Push still has only three choices and Flashpoint still has not came out with a new map yet. What if players run the same skin? Are they forced to swap skins before the match? I think they can do whatever they want. I don't think there's any rules in regards to that. Great response from Luminosity defenders here, and that might be enough to stop Tylus from encroaching further. Yep, with a rocket pickoff here, Luminosity are back in the driver's seat. What a close game! Like three or four meters separate. Yeah, this has been crazy. Outside of Eichenwald, this has been a pretty awesome series so far. Now that Luminosity has been able to walk it back into their territory, though, they are just waiting for reinforcements so they can actually pop some of these ultimates. What a wonderful fight for them to win with using nothing. So they've got five coming into this next fight. <laughs> so you should be feeling pretty confident if you're a Luminosity fan right now that they can get the job done. Timeless is giving a fair bit of ground before the fight even starts. To be fair, the bot has moved up to their side of the straightaway. Here's a terror Surge. Not really a lot of whiffs. Dante just wanted to maybe force some action out. Well, he got what he asked for. Sound barriers now from both sides, but Vision will, will be will, the one with the overclock. Once that barrier... Oh, Sonjun! Sonjun, though, very close to building his. Will he have an opportunity? Vision wants to try and chase him down, so Sonjun drops to the low ground. CJ might be punished for his audacity in keeping his sojourn up, and so he is. Vision now has a high ground position to play. Oh, nice flick. Sonjun finally gets involved. That's two kills for the timeless Sojourn, and he's looking for more. Uh, the point, though, the point. Vision trying to get rid of the Sojourn as quickly as he can. Eventually, Sonjun brings him down. The point! The point! Sage. Sunjun bringing that back is awesome. 
It's a slim margin, but it's enough. You know, you delay the bot progress if you're if you're timeless, but now you still have the chance to like come back into this as a team of five luminosity already at the bridge, so you should be able to deny the lead being taken. Sunjun's goaded. I'm glad he's getting another chance in the spotlight. And I think it's even cooler that it's for a uh, Western team. It's like very unexpected. Oh, King! Hunting down the Tracer! Uh-oh. Bro, Sunjun just always collapsed back whenever it's looking bad. Bro is locked in. Can he do it again? Oh my god, Juby. He's a bully. Now I think Luminosity may be happy just to cut their losses here. With only Icy. Focus a target here, guys. Let's pick one. Get the Soge. There you go. I don't know why he's using Pulse there. Icy's way too healthy for that. And King eventually will fall. This last fight might just occur. Where Timeless has a position. I mean, this is still doable for Luminosity. Look at the old bank. They're about even. They've got an opportunity here. Just a couple seconds ago. You've got defenders advantage to the high ground a little bit here, at least. I think Tile streams, does he not? But if you take a look, it could be an even four before fight. As long as somebody doesn't get picked early. No one has any checkpoints, so there's not that volatility to contend with. Very early ults from Timeless. Oh my god, there's an everything. And that should be that. And that will be Timeless taking the lead. This is a awesome game. It is delivering. Well, this is amazing because you did see that there was that 4v4 of ultimates on both sides. But then the fact that we just saw Timeless be like, oh, we have no fear. We've got this. Let's just Terra Search right now. We've got the beat. We can back it up. And then they executed. And that was exactly what you wanted to see out of Timeless to be able to get that lead. But it was so close, Mitch. That map was so back and forth. It could have gone either way. Yeah, and that what they ultimately, they applied enough pressure to force a timing error for Juby. Juby could Are we feeling the Necro Mitch combo? It's okay. It's not the worst. Don't love it, though. I miss having Matt there, but what can you do? Stay alive and hold on to that overclock until both beats have subsided. That kind of requires keeping him alive uh, in the fight in general. So great opening there was found, I think, by, by Timeless. And that small edge, I mean, I think Luminosity are going to be feeling that cut throughout the rest of this series here. It takes us to a potential series point on New Junk City around the corner as Timeless, yeah, look really good after that roster swap in map two. That's here. Luminosity. Where's Matt? I don't have then, the slightest clue. Close out a very intense Coliseo map. Oh, yeah, they're very locked in there. You can see, I think there's like a, a rail gun that body shots uh, vision, and then he that's in an interview with Thorin. Is that so? I did not know about this. Yeah, but I mean, like, even just the comms all the way up until the very end, they're like, we, we haven't done it yet. We still need to make sure that nobody actually touches the bot to trigger the overtime again. So uh, it's great to see them locked in, and it's very clear how evenly matched I think both of these teams are. Uh, we still have more of the series yet to come. Yeah, again, but uh, worth taking this opportunity to look back over them so far because, again, a lot of the conversation has been about, you know, Vision, who looked really good on that first map, the switch to Ash. Seemed like he was, you know, fairly dominant in general. I think Chopper was struggling to keep up. 
but things change once Sonjun... Now that Overwatch will be back in China, I really hope to see 2023 Hangzhou Spark playing together in 2025. They often five stack on Gushui's stream. You never know. I'm wondering if maybe... Because they've been more willing to be flexible with rules and changing things, if they'll consider letting Chinese players be imported into these other places in Asia. It was a game of inches, literally, on that scoreboard. These two teams were separated by like one to four meters from most of the map. But again, it's maintaining that mental acuity until the last moment that garners you a win. And what a hard fought victory here for Timeless to set themselves up with a lead. I want to take a second there to also call out opener specifically. I think Lucios are support heroes that go a little bit uh, underappreciated, I think, in a meta like New this. Junk like, City really up next. So, I wish there was more variety with Flashpoint. Because uh, I think it's a pretty entertaining game mode, but it'd be nice to see a new map. Even in opener's case, actually create an opening to get a pick. And so I think just being able to watch how Opener is able to move around the map... Wouldn't it be better to have a dedicated Chinese competition? Oh, I don't disagree with you. It's just this year, that's not going to happen. Which is why I think for now, here in 2024, since those servers are coming back online, they should at least have some kind of chance to compete, you know? And then heading into 2025, they can figure that kind of stuff out. What we saw at the outset from this timeless squad... Uh, oh, yeah, a pretty new guy to the Overwatch esports team. What happened to the two casters from season one? Oh, you're referring to Monty and Doa. You see, they left after 2019. Beginning of 2020, they decided to leave. They didn't see eye to eye with the creative direction of the league and where it was going, so they left. They decided not to negotiate a new contract and they pieced out. A win versus Timeless, exit from the group in first place. <laughs> escape the escape the patch coming in. <laughs> patch. There's so much oh to play for. God. Mid stage patch. Who's gonna get the buff or the nerf? I, I think that's the scary thing for. Even if they could, I have a hard time seeing one to two Chinese players in an English or Korean speaking roster. You'd be surprised. I mean, Gushui's played on Korean speaking teams. Shy wanted to play in Saudi E League for crying out loud, but couldn't at the last second because he didn't make it there in time. You'd be surprised what these guys want to do for opportunities. Like that until we get to the main event itself. Here we go first flashpoint as per usual, folks. Middle of the map. We are going to have a Cassidy versus Soldier and difference. So this is actually making the switch here. Drop more than happy to to pick up where Sonjun left off. Monte Cristo has recently picked up a fight with a League of Legends pro player. Oh boy. Is Monte back to his old ways of memeing on people and saying they suck? Oh my god. Okay. The spear railgun combo, goodbye. I mean, that, that, that's just like a very easy one two combo that is super effective at long range. Javelin. All right, Chopper said Sun Jun had his fun. It's my turn now. Cassidy could really do. Chopper very quickly asserting himself, coming back into the lineup here. It's always so interesting to see how timeless play around the use. Oh, yeah, I went beyond caster differences. Him and Doa generally didn't like the direction the league was going, so they left, which I think is understandable, because they they left a couple of years before the downward trend happened. He actually did that. I mean, it's nothing new. Monty's been doing that for like over a decade now, it feels like at this point. Monty, oh, Monty always speaks his mind and triggers fanboys and or players slash orgs. That is just his persona. Monty got an argument over whether a play in league was informed by scrim leaks. That sounds like such a Monty thing to do. I'm not going to lie. You either love or hate the guy. I used to not like Monty, then I learned to kind of respect him in Overwatch, but my opinion outside of that, I don't really have much when it comes to other esports. I just enjoyed his cast in Overwatch and how he'd meme on Outlaws fans. No offense, it was funny. He'd trigger Outlaws and Dallas fans. Yeah, exactly, Bora. Exactly my point. He would dunk on Dallas and Houston, honestly. 
this flashpoint, but also for the first fight on the next one. Opener is grinning from ear to ear right now. Not Monty looks like my high school physics teacher. I hated that. Nice. What a valuable asset to have into this next flashpoint. I, I mean, if you're able to just get immediate control... Hey, yo, chat, Cam is challenging you. If you're enjoying the stream, I definitely would appreciate it if you could leave a like on it. It's going to be refinery, and this is... Definitely like the stream if you're enjoying the content. It would mean a lot. Just play Sombra Go. It's true. Fight close together. Yeah, especially if you, as the team controlling the point, want to push into that choke and take advantage of the fact that you're... I mean, part of it is Monty always believes he's right no matter what. He's one of those people. So, yeah. There's no winning in that situation. What do I get in return for my like? Um... You get... Happiness and a firm handshake if I ever meet you in real life. All your dreams will come true. Alright, well that's good news though for Luminosity. They got past sort of the, the big behemoth, which is that sound. Have you seen that crazy raccoon picked up that whack roster? I did, which is awesome. Really, really good. That's what we like. That's what we like to see. Investment in our Overwatch esport. Feel strong, man. That's only a matter of time before they back out because of controversy. Smile. Just kidding. That won't happen. Surely not. That's part of the plan, and guess what? Squid is able to release with that immortality field in play. Avoid the impact of Rocket's Pulse. King will have one though, but will he live to use it in this fight? It's looking unclear though. It's luminosity. Oh, I know what you can get, Penguin, for your like. You could get a uh, spot on the OWCS San Diego Hunters team. <laughs> hey, Cam, thank you for becoming a member. I appreciate it. has become a member. 80%. One more fight here. Enjoy your badge and your emotes. up this flashpoint score. Uh, still off the back of the pulse bomb. The Whack literally means we are crazy, Raccoon, which is awesome, by the way. I love that. Give and take we'll have to see from these Lucio sound barriers is, uh, how do they really change the tide? Juby has one and opener does not. Not even close. Juby here. Oh no, it was an option, Penguin, but now you can you can be the new social media manager. You can replace Danny. <laughs> and then you can choose to be subbed into the game whenever you want, no questions asked. <laughs> be like, Mir, get out of the game, it's my time to shine. <laughs> Didn't announce it until now, like how ends was Bubo spray check for a bit. Yeah. Hey, Cam, thank you for the five gifted, man. I appreciate it. What better than to have bomb flats such an open territory to play around to have that Cassidy pop off? Really means a lot. All right, let's see here. Tied up. Got a couple ults on both sides here. I'm looking for the rocket pop off, Chad. I'm looking for it. Ah, uh, yes, the tactical reload by Vision, of course. See, it worked. It worked. Tactical reload. He gets chunked. You only need one HP. The sad flashback moment to Coliseo. I mean, again, like he, he didn't... Recently, I saw Prophet flexing his new car. It looked expensive. I mean, Prophet is preloaded. I can understand that. Bro got the bag playing in Overwatch League for six years. And he got money playing for GC Busan beforehand. Prophet probably got a ton of money playing in Owl. I can't even imagine. Like, I heard he made, like, 300k, like, in a season on Soul Dynasty. It was, like, insane money. Prophet got the goddamn bag, bro. You know, he got the fat... Like, think about it. He got paid fat contracts in the later years of Owl, and they paid well in the early years of Owl, so... Prophet, like, consistently got good money. As big of an impact as you would expect when you have the sound barrier and the other team does not. I will like the stream if ATP tries peanut butter on a hamburger. Honestly, I'm willing to try anything once. That's a quote of the year right there. Probably shouldn't have said that, but here we are. 
percentage. When I was in the Philippines seeing my girlfriend, I tried something like similar to that, I guess you could say. Like, it's called kare kare. It's like a peanut butter based sauce with beef. So I guess I've had something similar. Should definitely try Brazilian food. I've seen Brazilian food, it looks really good. I've never uh, gotten the chance to try it before, but it looks hella good. Also, there's a chance here for Luminosity. Chopper needs to show up big. Oh, the stick by King is crazy. They have numbers, 3v2. Oh, Vision. And now they have a chance to take us to a map five. Hey, well, well, there's a great example of your high noon into reload. <laughs> it was plenty for Vision to be able to get that one. Oh, yeah, the Sinatra, dude, this, the Sinatra salary thing, like, doesn't even compare. Like, yeah, the Decay bidding war in Season 2 was absurd. Carpe, remember Florida? Like, Albert, for those of you watching on Coachable, said they literally just tried to make Philly's life harder by offering Carpe as much money as humanly possible. How to meet my girlfriend? Uh, dating app. Yeah, I mean they have to turn it into something. Look, they can't be using it defensively. They need to lean into it proactively. Open, I mean, getting chunked down. The poke damage is real here. Dante though doesn't seem to be bothered being at half of his original HP. Yeah, so Prophet got a bag. I remember Hydron saying on stream, Prophet got like 300k in season six. Oh yeah, Toronto. I remember they were saying Toronto. They had such a bad roster because they spent all their money on Chorong just to sign Chorong. Like they gave Chorong a goddamn bag, and then they had nothing left for the rest of the team. Boink riding the bench on Houston for 150k. Got to be the best, bro. Boink actually finessed the system. That guy made the bag to do absolutely nothing. Like season three, he like wasn't even there. It felt like he was just doing his own thing, getting 150k casually. I respect it. Get your bag, man. However you have to. Especially with the sound barrier. That, that's really the, the big key is Juby has just been so cool. Mag S tier for Nestor. Think about like Roar. There is a bidding war for Decay. I'm sure the bidding war the bidding war for war was was also pretty crazy. Oh damn, that's a big spear. Sound barrier as well. Clean this up. The longer this gets drawn out, the worse it's gonna be for timeless. They either have to turn this. Oh, I see. Okay, there you go. Oh yeah, no, Roar definitely didn't have anything like Decay, but I'm sure it still costed a pretty penny to get him. Because gladiators, as we all know, were always very, very willing to spend big bucks, especially back then. They have to win one more fight though, because the job isn't done. And Luminosity come back into this one with that Deadeye as well as that Pulse Bomb of their own. Rocket still has yet to use his. I'm willing to bet that Roar is probably like the second highest paid though out of any of those Kongdu players. Surely. He was pretty sought after. Vision here, trying to square up on Icy. What a play from Icy in their previous fight. Vision Oh, how does Chopper die there? Oh no, he got booped. He got booped by Juby. Juby, they're going to be traded out now. The sound barrier in play for Timeless, but Dante's Terra Surge claims opener after he sends that ultimate. Icy's low, but Rocket keeps him in it. Oh my god. Is this it? That's it. We're going to map five. Oh boy. Didn't mad teams want Kom on Luffy too? Probably. Super said Glad's offered him 425k. Bro, I can't even imagine like seeing that number. Like just to play Overwatch. Holy. I saw Obligated. If, if Luminosity wins, Hunter's gonna flame Timeless's coach. Oh yeah. Honestly, if you walk out of this game with Timeless, 
uh, and you, you're able to, as rather, as better game than I expected. I can't imagine seeing that number and saying no. Yeah, that's another thing. Against them than they ever have before. That hard work that they've been putting in as a unit, of course, in the collegiate world, and this one. Sometimes I wonder, like, some of the offers some of these players got and what they're considering at the time. I love to hear insight like that from former Owl players. Like, there's so many rumors. But then, a lot of them end up being nothing more than that, just rumors. Never get that confirmation. When they were drawn out. Yeah, I mean, take a take a look at those mag grenades, some of the fan the hammers. Like I remember 2020 Philly, there were there were so many different uh, tanks they're supposedly yeah, rumored to get, so and then they just stuck with Sato. Cassidy feels really good. I think if you're Luminosity to know that even though your back is against a wall, you were on a match point. Remember when Kaiser was linked to like a bunch of different teams, and then nothing ever came of it. Like, trialed for a couple teams. I remember when I thought he was going to go to 2020 Valiant, and I was, like, really excited. But then that never happened. The biggest pro Overwatch pan of all time is XQC. This is true. Dropper comes back in. Probably must be... You know, at times like this... Uh, you probably wouldn't admit it, but it can get to you a little bit, right? You see Sonjin play, playing a similar role when you come in. I don't know about Eska, but I remember Kaiser. Eska was literally supposed to be on Dynasty, but then he did, like, military or whatever. So you're hoping that you don't get dragged out. Do you have a chance to sort of, you know, remind everybody that you definitely uh, command respect in that Sojourn or in that hitscan DPS role uh, afterwards? I also want to say, like... I don't think Esco would have made much of a difference for that Soul team. I always thought Esco was more overrated, personally. Normally you think, okay, be an advantage. Just push into them. Brute force this. Just go for the throw, get a free pick with that extra durability, and then snowball it out of control. I also thought Kaiser was more so overrated, but I still thought it'd be funny if he was on the Valiant. ...between both teams' sound barriers that were out of sync, but... When you have a sound barrier advantage and you're not able to gain it, I'll never forget that, bro. For years, people are like, sign Kaiser, sign Kaiser. He's so good. Never made Owl. Never got to make it there. Just not good enough. And so that was that amount of percentage that Luminosity was able to capture. Yeah, this match is nuts. I'm excited for this map five. So far, each map has felt completely different. What can we do to clean up those moments that that sound barrier advantage should have been a one fight for us and it wasn't? That's a big question. I just saw Apply map. made a tweet that I wholeheartedly agree with. I hate that Shambali is usually map five for tiebreak of Road WCS. Absolutely awful map. Barely see teams push second point. That's actually so real and true. You know, have you done enough, like, in advance to make sure that you can just run it? It watch Overwatch competitive since Al, but trying to get into it. Do you do that's beginner like, guides videos? I actually do do some guide videos if you check out my channel. I did one for EMEA and NA groups just a couple of days ago. I always do a brief preview of each region when stuff is about to happen. So you've come to the right place if you're looking for a guide and to get a general understanding of who's at the top so definitely recommend those videos silver three and malfo got an owl before him yeah just think about that no, it, and it, it just has, I think, a lot to do with the team comms and communication. And I think when you take a look at just how the team is formed in these 5v5s... I knew to come to you because I used to watch every hour watch party. Gotcha. Yeah, I do plenty of them, though. I don't go, like, super in-depth with every team because some obviously aren't worth it. But... General consensus and, like, how Swiss stage went and stuff. And... Yeah. Playing on Shambali Monastery. This is a payload map. Who is going to be able to have the better idea of how to make sure that this actually gets over the line to take the win? Yeah, often like the the sort of like Orisa or Ramatra based compositions find success here mostly. So the, the, 
the pace of play a little bit slower. This is a luminosity map pick as well, chat, which is pretty massive. Might be something else planned here, of course, but outside of that, like even with the substitutions, I I really expect these comps to be very much the same. This is the kind of standard that's been set. I like the Baptiste. Yes, Penguin. Mateball plays next. They're playing M80. Pirates in pajamas versus M80 is going to be the next game after this one. Nobody is going to try and maintain a sideline. Not even a sojourn, who of course can outrange. Yeah, Byron. Yeah. Malfo was kind of along for the ride. Like, they signed him in Contenders just because they wanted Sony to play Genji and Doom, and then they ended up winning that Contenders tournament or whatever it was, and then Vegas picked them up. At least Toronto isn't mid anymore. It for now. For now. Finding a win here would be unprecedented and a huge boost, a proof of the hard work Luminosity been putting in. They've been putting in a ton of hard work, and I think you can also give a call back to the fact that this squad is all- Toronto, if Toronto lost to Yeti, I'd cry, a dude. Huge tour de force when it comes down to some of the competition we've been seeing as of late, and a really big proving ground for a lot of these teams to be able to show their worth, not just in the OWCS open ecosystem, but also with just how strong Collegiate has also become. But Hey, I think like Timeless, they also want to prove that they still are deserving of that second place spot. It's going to be, it's going to come down to... All right, Timeless, we need a good push here. One of those maps that you don't always know how it's going to end until it's over. And it all comes down to this very first point. Can the attacking team get past this first... The issue is Yeti are good at like one thing in particular. They are a dive team. <laughs> they can, you know, Dongha can play some Ryan, but... In this meta, I don't think they're beating Toronto in this kind of setup. Probably not, right? My confidence on Yeti if they can't get away with dive is not super high. Yes, Kevster is on ends. They are good, yes. They had a really close game today, though, which may put that into question. But Kepster is on a team with Kai and Masa and Vestola. It's a pretty solid team. Crimzo as well. I mean, the Decay team is, like, dead. Genesis, I think, are dead. I saw Bob uh, Calio say he's looking for a team. Um, and I think there's a couple other issues. Oh, uh, Kellen as well is going to Twisted Minds. I forgot about that. And as I'm not able to find anything, as the Suzu is an insurance to keep Chopper in the fight. Okay, that was clean for Timeless, just the one ult. What's great for both of these teams is that... Can we see more of the map than just point A? Find out next time on Overwatch Z. Defensive stronghold, but Luminosity still get a chance to come back into this one, having only used the amplification matrix. So, uh, I think we still have some more shenanigans. Early recall from King. In a bit of a bind. Good denial by Dante. That beat is late. Oh, Riker lives. Seems like the team has generally played better with Riker in the game than I see. Hey, we're getting we're getting more than point A. It's a miracle. Let's go. You know what that means? If it's not a full hold, we're certainly going to point C. Smile. Yeah, I mean, we sort of find value randomly on, like, the, the junkyard of last map, where you, like, I think Vision randomly kills uh, Rocket reload. with it. <laughs> yeah, it was, but yeah, that's right, the reload was valued, but there was a Tracer kill that was pretty impactful, but you can't, like you said, rely on that at all. Rocket a little bit low. Did I hear for Vision Will? They're using everything to keep him alive, bro, just cancel it, oh my god. 
They'd use everything in the book to keep him alive there. Why are we holding that for so long? We used lamp. We used window. We used everything under the sun to try and save our ult and cast there. It's just not worth it. I think in this situation, Soge just works better. I feel like this is a better Soge map. Why is it always this map? I don't know, man. Everyone always picks this goddamn map. Why does it have to be Escort in general for map 5? I like what Korea's doing. Where they kind of just like get to pick what they want after control. I think that's a really good way of doing it. Deadeye has been buffed. It doesn't matter. It's still not a great ult regardless. The best team, if we're talking from any region in general, probably either Team Falcons or Whack. We are Crazy Raccoon, as they're called now. What happened to the vision on Redbird Sag? I mean, he's been generally playing good this series. I just think Cass is not the play now. They need a Soge. Play soldier, don't do that. <laughs> Definitely don't do that. Non-factor. What's this huge disadvantage? That's crazy, Penguin. That is a very early immo. Oh boy. So they've got to give a little bit of extra ground first, and that's already an immortality field down. And that's before Timeless have really done anything more than just posture. Dude, Reiner and Gig, yeah. I miss Gig a lot. His Ryan was hilarious. And literally just NA bumper. Never forget. Never forget when Bro is chatting out on Ryan. Ooh, okay, they needed that. Would you rather see Map 5 Circuit, Havana, or Shambali? Oh, Lord. I strongly dislike all of those maps. I mean, I guess Circuit, because sometimes you get some fun sniper plays and stuff, which I think can be enjoyable. But generally, I don't like any of them. Yes, the guy Dreamer replaced. I miss Dreamer as well, man. 2020 Valiant Dreamer was goaded. I also very much prefer what Asia is doing. Kind of sad they can't push him there, though. Oh, that helps. Whoa! Oh, nice, nice lamp, nice lamp, nice lamp. Counter-Strike stuff? No. I don't watch it. CJ ulted there, too. Ooh, this is looking like a good opportunity for a point C hold with this type of ult economy. Just don't... Don't overexert yourself here and use everything at once and you're chilling. But I mean, he heard people talk about scoping, you know, like a you know, pretty pretty flexible player, able to do it all. See, just well, I haven't done this. Dreamer's playing in the in the face at league. I'm glad to hear that. Oh my god, Rocket's getting hunted down. You don't have much time here now. You can't get forced back like this. Oh boy. Rocket gets a sound barrier though, so the pulse bomb gets shrugged off. Yeah, that's probably it. Hey, it's Houston In-Laws. It's been a while. Haven't seen you in chat in a while. A legend. Who are we rooting for? I'm on the Timeless bandwagon. They're my favorite team in NA, but... This is a good game regardless. 
you did not let timeless have all three points if overwatch got a dragon ball collab what characters would be your dream inclusion oh god teams get full health on that point it's so tough and it's so favored i mean outside of the obvious ones outside of like the obvious like goku or vegeta that's great but timeless won like four or five team fights <laughs> doomfist is napa yeah, zen is piccolo <laughs> genji as trunks would be a cool shout out without a doubt i want to see an echo cell skin like the wings the wings they remind me of echo give me a cell echo but so a second, so a holds towards the That would be sick. It's just genuinely very difficult to get done. And you're also playing from like a, a low ground disadvantage for a lot of the map, which can definitely play a small role in just how treacherous the climb tends to be. Hog Majin Boo would be awesome. Diva as Bulma would also be really cool. It gets a slower comp, but it's too much. You're cooking, chat. They might actually. They might. And, and I wouldn't. I wouldn't Holy. this. I really okay. Never mind. Uh, you know, listen. I, I was gonna get. I was gonna give it some props because I think if you do put all of your eggs into the Zenyatta basket, I'm not gonna lie. Any sort of Hanzo Dragon Ball skin, just like a Kame Kamehameha Dragon Strike, would be awesome. Ash would be launch. Shout out to launch. The character Akira Toriyama literally forgot about. Rest in peace. Play around the MO. Oh, they tried. If they get killed this Arissa, though, yeah, there you go. It's taken them a long time to get rid of Riker. So much so that Dante goes down first. Now, that, that may not be what ends this fight. It might not be a difference maker. But they need to be able to try and complete some of these kills. And they are no closer to getting the high ground with Rocket contesting. Hey, Cam, thank you for the $2 super chat. Is Dragon Ball super, mid, or gas? For me, it's somewhere in between. I think it has some really good moments, but also some moments that piss me off. Taking advantage of the fact that neither tank is in sight is just I think generally it's pretty good though. There are some problems I have with it, but I enjoyed it. The titles coming back as a full team of five. Luminosity are playing around this archway, which is a great defensive corner. The Omni King is ball Omega Wall. Fight taken here earlier on. I feel like it was by timeless in a losing fight. Riker was able to isolate a couple plays here with a terror surge and ended up winning a fight that started horribly for timeless. Oh, the limo again. That's tough. Dragon Ball Bridge is awesome. Man. This Baptiste from Luminosity has been really helpful. This is a very good pace for Luminosity to be on. But Luminosity did just get past level one of this dungeon, and now they've got to work out what is going to happen. See, I actually disagree with you, Cam. Uh, the new challenge here is to deal with... I think Tournament of the pa Tournament of Power, so while it was good, had a lot of cringe moments. Take a bit more of that forward space, get a bit of poke, see if they can even get a quick pick there with somebody like Vision next to him, but back up. I like the Goku Black arc, the Zamasu, Goku Black, a lot. In the Universe 6 tournament. That's a great stick. Just what you need. Oh, Riker, can they keep him alive? No, they can't. This is big for Luminosity. They are setting a great pace right now. Luminosity have not been stopped. Three and a half minutes to work with. Everything according to plan for the underdog team in this matchup. Ooh, well, Luminosity might not be able to sink this over the line right now. As though, as I say that, the Juby Taxi has arrived. So that's going to be a full 5v5 here. Uh, with oh, very another Immo denying the that. Thank you again, Cam. I appreciate you. Okay, with Riker down, though, I mean, that's point. 
This is looking like it, a great opportunity for Luminosity to win this map here. Timeless needs to find something, but I don't think they will. Rocket definitely can't cross the gap to Squid. And this is beautiful stuff. Coach Under has whipped this team in a shape. Four minutes. Four minutes. And they don't have to get very far. They don't even have to round this corner. This is looking like a Herculean task for Timeless. They've got a whole four minutes to make this happen. That should be plenty of time. The vets are playing well, man. Squid really is cooking. He's having an excellent map. Hunter Twitter fingers heating up. <laughs> and they're already past that corridor completely. That's a good beat. This could be it. Rocket, it's just him. That's it. Luminosity. The underdog getting a five map W over Timeless. That is big. Woo. We got some interesting developments in the NA scene under Toronto. That number two spot is very much up for grabs. Luminosity, Timeless, M80. Man, oh man. Dante with the dub. Dante and the boys did it. Damn. Good night, math. The next match, we got Pirates in Pajamas versus M80. M80 is Gator's team. Gator's team that he's coaching with Hawk. They picked up Happy after replacing Hydron with him. They've got Pelican. Ultraviolet. Liar. But they did not look that good yesterday. Which makes this game against Pirates in Pajamas interesting. The Goat Magic Mate Balls team. Ah, no, they're still on Pink Carrot. Who's Hydron? You made Fraudron? Yeah. They really did. I, I Congrats, think Vulcan. Just a good testament to scouting, the coaching on both of these squads, uh, the fact that they also... All right, we're throwing up a poll for this one now. I think that's something that is going to be really... M80 versus... How much practice can you get hit. against these top teams? And I feel like when you look at Timeless and Luminosity, these are teams that scrim against each other a lot. I don't know, chat. My hot take is I think this game's going to be close. I don't even know if that's a hot take because of what happened yesterday. But I low-key think Pip and M80 are about to have a close game. Maybe not as close as this one, but I could see five maps. M80 struggled against some Who Megalols yesterday. You into that approach, so Do you know being Australian? No, I mean, Hunter's a special case, even for an Australian. Like, <laughs> oh my god, the most irreverent person I have ever encountered, and that is saying a lot. Like, he doesn't care if he's if he's losing or winning, the trash talk will be there. You gotta respect liar. I mean, it's basically just that one play. Ruffle some feathers sometimes, and that has stoked a rivalry between these rosters that we've just now seen a new chapter. Well, Spectra is not even on the team anymore, but Pelican is on ping still. Timeless is still in this group. They're going to get out of this group. And these two teams are on a collision course, of course, when we get to the main event. But for now, the score has been settled. I love that story writes itself for us. And I honestly, I'm with you here, Mitch. I think uh, fighting words, regardless of it. I, I'm going to say M80 wins the series. But I genuinely want to say five maps because I think it'd be hilarious if they went five maps with Pirates in Pajamas. It probably won't happen. But I kind of want to will it into existence. So 3-2 M80. Omega oh, lol. Let's do it. We want pirates in pajamas. We want a good game. M80 almost lost two maps to Unk Inc. So why can't they lose two to pirates in pajamas? Why not? You know what I mean? Like that kind of that kind of energy you you can't deny. That's infectious. 
I don't know if I do know what you mean, but I take well, word for it and... If, it, if it's a problem, see a doctor, that's all I'm saying. There has to be a clip <laughs> on social... Does some gig still play? Probably. There's gonna be something out there, but, uh, yeah, I mean... Uh, like, you can say... Oh, he, he's plays in collegiate, yeah. Person, gig still plays. Like I don't know if he starts like often, image. but he plays. It's very clear that he is an incredible coach, because he's done it time and time again with different players, with different rosters. Yeah, Hunter coaching this team certainly helps. Help them, uh, find their stride. Uh, etc. So, yeah, I, I did love that this was a close... I don't know if I'd say proper as a weak mental. That's what they got in the set match. They will most likely both advance out of this group, so we might see this clash again. Yeah, we could see a Luminosity and Timeless rematch again. Which individual stood out the most for you guys? Ooh, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I, I was a big fan. <laughs> That's a fact. Yeah, probably. I think there's been a huge step up there in just how the team is sort of formed around him. Vision had a tough job. Like playing that Cassidy, it's feast or famine. You're either having huge impact or you're dying first in those fights, and there's no in between. That plays havoc on the mental. It really does. <laughs> I, it can be very hard to stay in the day with like half the fights you just like. You're just ulting, you're pressing Q to respawn, and you have to run it back there. When I played Collegiate, we played against him. I always say this, chat. One thing I always wish I did when I was in college is played for my school's Overwatch team. Back then, I wasn't as confident, because, like, I was still kind of new to Overwatch on PC, so I, I didn't really have the confidence to go out there and try, but I kind of wish I did, looking back at it. Well, let's actually uh, bring in Onto and hear it from him, what he think actually turned... Hey, speak of the devil. It's great to see you again. For oh, 22 proper, easily. With this gun, I'm deeply disappointed and a little hurt. Or is it still Wait, there? Yeah, yeah, had, yeah. Is it I, No, it's, it's all gone, I'm afraid. I, oh I, I miss God. it terribly, but it, uh, it, it had to go. No more mullet? Yeah, you know, Sag. The thing about really is it regrows, I mean, especially no. on this side. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Luminosity got the W. Close game. I'm pleasantly surprised. It's a good thing, though. I'm glad there's some parody in NA and it's not just, it's obviously Toronto, that it's obviously timeless than M80. I'm glad there's some shakeups here at the top. Get your mullet attached to a necklace or make a wig out before you, big son. That's exactly how it works. Well, Hunter, uh, let's chat a little bit about this match. Uh, it was uh, a big back and forth, uh, you know, great performances on both sides. What do you think actually ended up giving you guys the edge? What adjustments did you have to make throughout the series as it went on in order to come out on top? Uh, to be honest, it felt like we were better than that team pretty much the whole way through. This isn't this okay. isn't just funny trash talk. Um, we I just I just decided to piss away Ike and Walt for a laugh. I put Luke Minow in, played a matchup. Okay, Hunter. Normally play in matches, um, and then like Coliseo. I mean, like we we won that map. You know, the scoreboard just didn't really reflect it at the end. When we this is some it. Max Copio. But um, honestly, I, f I feel like we genuinely did have like the edge on them pretty much consistently. You know, whether they played Tank One or Tank Two, they were both absolutely Mickey Mouse. Like they didn't. Stand a chance against Dante, veteran experience. Um, you know, we, we had the edge on them the whole time. What do you, what do you Luminosity won King so Arthur. You know, you've got a, you've got if I would 2023 20, Vegas Eternal make an NAOWCS, they would not even be here. What do you kind of think about this team? Because they've had your number up until now, mate, but you feel like there's a, a change of the guard afoot? Um, it, it is a bit of that, to be honest. You know, Timeless is a team that's full of all the next up young talent. Emphasis on next up, obviously. We've even got some of the next up coaches on that team in the form of Capitology and whatnot, who, you know, obviously were all terrified that he wasn't in the Overwatch League because, you know, God knows what he could have done with the roster. But yeah, I mean, it, you're right that Timeless is very much this uh, this new generation of talent coming through. But you'll also see that on our team. Like, Luminosity, we have players like... Yeah, I mean, Antur proves a good point there. They have vets, but they also have other guys who... This week. Haven't really played an owl. In last OWCS, that bastard through our matches playing back. Would 2023 mayhem be better or worse with proper? I don't know. I don't know for sure how he changed the dynamic of that team. <laughs> oh my goodness. I, mean, I would lean towards better, but Checkmate also made a lot of sense for that team's system, I feel like. He played a lot of the more niche stuff. I think proper always needs to be on the more carry-oriented stuff. Checkmate can do the dirty work on the stuff that's like not as flashy. 
40 years old. So, I don't know, we might have to look at the Gumba strat of signing a 17 year old. If that's, um, that's the method. It's Thoughts on you kind of wanting March Madness? I'm hyped. Back to back, baby. My state feels strong, man. The only thing we have. <laughs> That in the Connecticut Sun and the WNBA is about all Connecticut has, so we take those. Um, they have had really solid performances. You know, M80 has crumbled to Timeless a few times over. You watch practice and whatnot, and again, they, they lose to M. Uh, timeless loses. Who is the better sojourn, Merit Meta or, or, Merit or Quartz? That's pretty close. I'd probably say Merit, but Quartz is really, really good. Do I think the three-peat is possible? Yeah, but probably not going to happen. They're losing some... I know they're, they're losing uh, Klingon to the NBA draft, which is a pretty big loss. Oh, yeah, watch Uncoachable and take... Hey, make your bed for uncoachable no, at least. No one's gonna Try watch that. a four-hour show. Yeah, that's that's kind of my thoughts on it, Adam. I agree. Big brain, Uyghurs. That's the answer we know and love. Thank you so much for joining. I think I always said peak sojourn. I'll take shy over anyone. What a guy. <laughs> again, uh, he's, he, tell you what, like, again, like, you know, he's always down for a bit of Although, actually, that's not entirely true. I think Proper had probably the highest peak of any player, but I think Merritt had the longevity. Or Shy, I'm sorry, not Merritt. Shy had the longevity. I love that they mentioned, like, the transition with the Baptiste play. Squid is really coming into his own. We talked about how much of a difference maker he was, especially- I'm taking Shu on Sojourn. Yo, Shu Sojourn, that was a, that was a time to be alive. I think Juby also had a glow up between stages one and two. I think that is a Lucio that you need to count on for a lot of these team fights, whether it was the sound barrier coming in at the right time or also being able to help out with making sure that Vision actually had a good sight line. Juby also came up really big today. Yeah, I think this team has definitely put themselves on everyone's radar. The top teams know to be afraid, uh, or at least, you know, wary of them uh, when it comes uh, to their matches against them. Uh, we will be seeing more off timers, of course. Uh, of Luminosity the top so five sojourns. Uh, Merit, Happy, uh, Lip, Shy, Proper. Try. Oh, dear God. Happy, probably five. Second chance for the loser. I'd say and five happy. To the main event. So they get to sit back Four, Lip, now we have three, one Merit. Game to play today, and that's gonna be or actually, no, I got to think about that. And all of that is going to happen on the other side. No, maybe, maybe proper four. Oh God, I don't know, man. Shy is my number one though, and then Merit's probably my number two. It's hard, man. Ants refuse to learn Soja. Like, that's such a crazy thing to say, isn't it? Man. Gladiators back then, it, it sometimes it amazes me they were as good as they were. Just based off of Hunter's point of view on it. Oh my god, it was cursed. Like, the, the, just the idea of everyone bashing heads with each other was so funny. Like, Reiner getting pissed at Patty Pan. Patty Pan playing a lot better during game that he wouldn't scrims. Aunt's yelling at people all the time and hating his life. Like, oh my God. How did that team win as much as they did? <laughs> the three heads of the mental health horsemen. My top five widows of all time. I don't, I mean, I, I don't have an order for you, but Ans has to be in there, like, 1,000%. I'd probably throw Diem in there. Um... I personally think Carpe should be in there somewhere. That's biased, but... I think Carpe's in there. Hmm. No, not Fleta. Um, probably Happy I'd throw in there.
And then like... Maybe Saya, maybe? Fine was good too, yeah. Suna was pretty goaded, but he's not top five. Fletta was good at Widow, but outside of season one, didn't play her much. Decay that one game. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, like May Melee, Decay, or whatever it was. Well, it's kind of cracked at Widow. MN3 was insane at Widow, you're right. MN3 is probably my top five, just from like skill perspective. I questioned Unturned Face's contribution on Glads after he said Smash did most of the coaching. Yeah, it seems like Smash sabotaged the team more than anything, though, from his point of view, at least. Yeah, Fleta had that that clutch on King's Row. Fleta absolutely has one of the best Widow clips. The Brittle Maker. I remember that. It went crazy. I agree with you, Dianshu, 100%. I'm a Carpe fanboy, you won't hear me disagree. Yeah, Smash New Dive Well, and that was the only thing. I'll never forget, he kept on saying, like, the angles, the angles. It was so funny listening to Hunter. Linkser Widow in Season 1 was a spectacle. Like, Stage 1, 2018 Linkser, oh boy. Remember when Stryker tried to play against DM Widow? Yeah, I remember, like, everyone was hyping up Stryker Widow during that time because, like, he was just practicing Widow nonstop because he was benched in GOATs, and then it never really came to be. I thought Season 5's format was really good. I kind of like Season 2's format, though, as well. It was, like, less games than Season 1, but, like, the similar we're gonna have a couple stage tournaments type of deal. Violet Widow did go hard. Oh my god, you made- I completely forgot about Bird Ring's Widow. Bird Ring's Widow's insane, dude! Oh, I have to put Bird Ring in the top 5 somewhere. Welcome back, family, friends, and acquaintances, I guess. Mitch and Rosemary are joining me for the last game. I remember when Boston in Stage 4 had Stryker learn Widow and Farah. That was an interesting time. What teams do you see lasting the entire season? Anyone that's backed by an actual org, and there's your answer. Expect to see it towards the top of NA, and how could you not feel even more confident in that when they've got the additions of Happy and Liar into the roster? Liar has had so much experience. Real ones were ever when Striker played Farah on stage four, though. Oh, that was an experience. Remember when his junk rat was low key good, also? Remember when Kareev switched to DPS temporarily and he was actually pretty good on Widow? Yeah, Kareev's Widow was always really good because he used to play DPS before Owl. I'll never forget the strat. Even after they put him back on support, when Valiant would play on, uh, what's that map called again? A Horizon. And they'd have Kareev, like, out of spawn, be playing Widow and he'd go crazy. 
honestly, they had a pretty competitive battle. Curse you, Coach Moon, though. It was so unnecessary to do that. Brief switch twice, and I don't think he wanted to switch either time. I'm pretty sure Coach Moon's just like, hey, play DPS, do it. Thank you for the $2, Vulcan. Saya greater than everyone. Saya, in my opinion, is easily one of the best Widow Duelists. That guy knew how to just completely boom the enemy Widow. Like, him, Ants, and MN3 are probably my favorite Widow Duelist. And then Pine also is a shout. Birdring actually might have been a top 5 Widow, genuinely. I was completely forgetting about him. Which is crazy. I'm always feeling a little bit of it, right? I think if you take a look at this group and you segment out who you think will make it out of Yeah, that's the one booming Bob, I remember. Didn't work too well for them. They tried to get fancy. Yo, Fatty Maddie, what's up, man? Yeah, we're looking to see how M80 hit the ground running. Pine did play in a weaker league, however, I think with those mechanics, he probably could have been good in any era. Pine has some of the best mechanics ever. Even from that time, what he was doing is still seen as, like, ridiculous, in my opinion. I think with those mechanics, he could have went toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody. He did lack consistency, though, so he'd be pretty hot and cold. We get some, some echo where there are some maps that sort of suit that. Same. Not so sure if, uh, you know, that's going to be amazing in this first round. But we have seen echo here on this particular stage. We have, and I would love to see some more Pelican Echo as well. I know it's one of his favorite heroes to play. And it's one of our favorite heroes to watch. But I think All right, here we go. Look at what's gonna be we want a good series. Let's go Pirates in Pajamas. I feel like uh, the, the Echo is as self-sustainable as I think no, you might support. want it to be, especially if you're... A lot of players got killed by goats. Oh yeah, Pine's mechanics certainly needed some work. Yeah, Happy's gamer tag is something. Also, Baze, M80's playing Torb. Dude, oh my god, I've missed the Pelican Torb. Pelican's Torb is insane. Yeah, M80 are pretty good. They have a pretty talented roster. Dude, I want Pirates in Pajamas to make this a series so bad. Like, after what I saw yesterday from M80, I'm praying to the gods that Magic Mateball booms another opponent. Yeah, Happy's on an alt. UGVUYCFGB6, whatever that's supposed to mean. That might be coming through from Stone, or even Anion, if she's going to be teleporting back into some of the other kind of dps members to give them a hand oh it's extremely troll against tracy it is so effective in that matchup but also is like a higher ping option it's pretty pretty reliable to go for so chronic here looking for an opening there are very little a realistic multiverse atlanta rain you're not wrong amongst the low ground here on this side but right now it's all about trying to put some pressure down on hawk eventually pelican's turret is going to be picked off He's had a lot of impact with that Hey, Magic Meatball! There he goes to a two! Magic Meatball at two! He's so clean with it! Magic Meatball is my MVP. Take a look at that eight ball again, though, and see what it's going to come up with next. Because, uh, do you get to keep the point? Hey, Penguin, I'm saying it's a close series, at least. Chad is just a non-believer, period. But M80, like, uh, they've already done quite a bit of work here. I, think I actually could see Pirates winning this series, though, like, low-key. As sad as it sounds to say. Canadian White Geo is such a crazy thing to say. Either way, Pirates in Pajamas don't have time to be consulting for advice. They need to get themselves set up here on the point. And oh, Pelican is just too clean with it. It ends up being Onion that takes a riveting shot there from Pelican. And Chronic is going to be brought down. Now Pelican has a nasty little off angle. April 15th, Happy and Pelican come to NA. Is that true? That's a W. I'm glad to hear. I mean, it's not going to matter if they win today. We won't see them until the week after. I love Pelican's Torb, man. It's so good. 
Warlock has on the Diva to be able to just kind of slide away. So uh, yeah, Torbon Ping is always a pretty viable option. Actually, listen to Lucio here. Gotta go quick. That's it. Gotta make a play happen here around that sound barrier. The high ground control though is something that's gonna take a little longer to assume. Oh, speed out of there. Okay. Oh, don't die to that though. Happy interrupted during that dead eye. Sound barrier comes out here from both Lucio's almost simultaneously. It's a lot of pressure that one strider. Force back. Hawk, of course, able to retreat to some degree behind that defense. A nice headshot, but dude, Pelican is destroying them. Oh my god. King. Should just be a point capture here. I don't even know if the Lucio can touch, if it can just the away. So, uh. That ain't right to be able to do that on ping. That ain't right, man. But it's not like it's something he ain't used to. He's already done this before. He did this on it later rain. He knows what this is like. Just a casual day at the office for this dude. Insane stuff. with like the displacement potential that Hawk offers, Pelican operating off angles pretty effectively, also make it half a stone to flank. So your ability to pinch M80 or even like to force them out of position kind of isn't really there. So we saw Pirates of Pajamas, like, they speed into, like, a defense, ma uh, an ant matrix, rather, just to try and, like, you know, take him maybe by surprise. And they had a decent goal of it, right? That fight ends up going in their, uh, in their favor eventually. And they make it competitive, but not quite on the same level there in that first round. Let's see what City said. Sometimes I feel like people don't realize how much Pelican raced the ceiling of that Atlanta team. I understand they were a good team and a lot of guys elevated their play, but holy frick, dude. Pelican was a beast. Rookie year Pelican was a beast. Oh, Strider. I saw what the idea was there. He didn't actually have the room to push Ultraviolet outside of his immortality field. And eventually gets punished for it. Bit of an overextension there. The rest of the fight has been... As long as it was consistent, it was still possible to compete. But that's the thing. Can't always rely on that to be consistent. ...with the diva on the high ground. I think you're always going to struggle if you're Pirates in Pajamas to actually take that elevator up to the top and keep it uh, and especially when you have uh, you know the torp turret or even just the cassidy coming through from happy there's a lot of ways you can lock down that high ground away from pip uh, that turret is like in such a funny spot very annoying turret placement there for pelican can't really be seen it's a good boop but can they, they no finish though tragic he's able to skid right still healthy enough in fact to hold his ground and send some shots back in the direction of the pirates Right now, trying to reclaim the point. They finally clear that Torb turret out of the way, but that can be refreshed in a few moments. Back with eight stuck. Happy doesn't know to who. Is Pelican the Torb go? He's certainly up there. His Torb is insane. I love the Pelican Torb. Now a 44% of count is going to be a sound barrier exchange. The Pelican Torb anti dive on Atlanta was awesome. And that ends up being a one sided fight, to be sure. That is happy. And you only needed a sound barrier to do that. Feels so good, especially as a response to something like the Katsune Rush. Usually, you got the Katsune Rush and you go nine times out of ten. It's a very powerful ultimate, and that could be a yeah. Carpe's got the 100% win rate on Torb, though. I can't really argue with that, but, but Pelican is up there for, as well for me. Insane. Everything else, and it uh, should realistically be a fight win here. They don't have to play around the Terra Surge. Um, and they also have the amplification matrix to help. Well, no, Pelican was always good. It's just they always want he always wanted to do his own thing when it's clearly not what Atlanta were good at. Happy's just playing on an ult account. Sag. Oh. Okay. Somehow. I don't know how that happened, but all right, sure. Unlikely outcome has chronic stuns the entirety of M80 and gets them back in the game. All right, so what should have been a fight? What the hell is Pelican doing? He actually playing 76? Hey, yo, Kia, look, 76. Your goat is playing 76. Capture progress, and they are also going to wrap around just to negate this high ground. That was a hilarious dead eye moment. I'm not gonna lie. I thought that dude was absolutely dead. I thought Chronic was so 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 dead. Matrix in his face, Happy's ulting somehow doesn't die. A long way back, Pip off to give this ground. 
76 used to be a staple on this section of Oasis way back in the day. That's a bad TP, oh, Annie Yoon. Oh boy, that was tragic. Liar just died to traffic. That's unbelievable. There's no way Liar just died to traffic. Stop. Same, Kyle. Same. That's exactly what I was thinking of. It's funny you bring that up. It doesn't even matter. They still won the round in the map. That was hilarious. What a goofy round that was. That dead eye moment. Liar dying to traffic. Oh boy. Uh, she must have been so isolated or not have sight lines in order to actually get away. Uh, but what great recognition there from Hawk. Whether it's going to be on the Diva or the Orisa, understanding that one crucial way for you to get a fight win is just keep a support lockdown. I guess like something people don't always think of is that Kiriko is actually a little bit more uh, unsafe when playing with their team because you don't have someone in the periphery or out of the fight to swift step to. Yeah, you can Probably not, Jogo. Probably not. If you get dove when you're playing amongst that concave of players, notwithstanding like a Lucio booping you for safety or something like that. And we know that those micro rockets up close, uh, like the, the amount of burst damage that can be applied from Diva, something that we don't often think- <laughs> Liar should just play Moira. I don't know. I don't know about that one. <laughs> throws himself at the Orisa as that fortify came off cooldown. So great game sense from Hawk there to just to identify some opportunities to slow down uh, and create a huge amount of spacing where Pirates and Pajamas don't have the ability to push back in. They can't recover quickly enough to be in the round anymore. Diva is one of Hawk's best heroes. Hi, Dron. I won't hear otherwise. <laughs> Absolutely more fraudulent than Yaki. Like this because we can... I don't know, get a little nostalgic. At least Yaki found some kind of success in Owl during his early year there. It is unreal. <laughs> that, wait, I think the boop helped him get that kill there. A huge off tank player, right? What's required? On that Atlanta rain team to really step into that, that main I think Toronto could put up a good fight against Wack or Falcons. I think they'd lose personally, but I think they could still be pretty good. I think they'll lose though. Where Hawk was relied on to kind of do it all. And it's no different on this particular team. And he'll show us like a, a bunch of different tanks over the course of the series, but the Diva is always one you can- Yeah, Hydron called everyone a fraud, but the only fraud was him the entire time. And Hollywood, a notorious Winston map uh, and uh, pirates don't want any of that I can bother action here that's a smart yes thing. correct whack is now that's crazy raccoon both sides, but I think this ends up Yaki in 2020 was insane in early 21 remember before the mayhem fell off how insane he played to get them to that tournament he played out of his goddamn mind and like even against like Shanghai he was he was giving them trouble in pajamas to really show us hydron called like half of the overwatch league frauds the sigma versus shikigami they did get the win with that sigma composition but if this is a whole different beast when you look at m80 as your opponent like he called oh like literal overwatch legends frauds a comfort pick that is where he is yeah feeling very strong and the may coming up here like i don't know if we'll really see it out of the gates but there's definitely some oh easily 2022 i'm like so isolating certain individuals doesn't feel like really much of a happy pick but yeah so uh, like a a poke composition here with maple on the brig yeah he call imagine calling fled on birdering frauds like, give me a break man sort of couple of engagements it's gonna be a mirror match on both sides though when it comes down to the hero selections on both teams uh, but you're right yeah it comes down to where does this sigma shield go what kind of safe rotation can you make a lot of times these sigma compositions we see this wrap around into the laundry room if they feel like that is going to be a safe enough approach i mean it's a very good spot 2023 paris probably win <laughs> sadly 
Good immortality field. That's lovely timing from Ultraviolet. What you'd expect. Oh man. Solid attack from M80. Well, rip my theory. It looks like it was just trouble yesterday for some random reason. So that's a quick first point capture. A very quick payload unlock. And that's also gonna be some forward space that M80 I don't know, like I feel like Hydron usually is telling the truth with those kinds of things. I don't think he'd joke about that. Like, this came from the same stream where he was calling, um, Gunba like, a racist and a crazy person and stuff. Also, Happy's about to play some Widow, so that's awesome. Why did the 23 Valiant struggle so much? They had no resources, barely any coaching. Well, they did have a coach, but they had no resources, no org to back them up, and no talent. Like, you have to put your Sigma on the low ground here? Which also means that, yeah, like if you can get Pelican on the high ground, like it's much harder to stop the Tracer from doing whatever she wants. I like the approach though, the response is good from, from Pirates. They take a ridiculous amount of damage from that Gravitic Flux though, and they have to recover from this quickly. Now with an Air Matrix in play for Ultraviolet... I heard most people in the league didn't rate Doha. I thought Doha was a pretty good player, that's kind of sad. Happy is over here now? Oh, you guys are screwed. Actually, maybe not. He is on ping. Oh, oh, body shot, body shot. Can't watch the side angles all the time either. There it is. Uh, so that sucks. If you're Pip. Look, I mean, so much of that fight got decided by the Gravitic Flux. I think Hawk is three or four players of Pirates in Pajamas there, and they have to first react to the fact that they've been Dude, BQB was so good in 2020, man. Immortality field, they've got to heal up very quickly, whilst M80 is still, pro like, piling on that pressure. In these poke comps... I thought Doha had a pretty good echo, oh, not echo, I'm sorry, Reaper as well. Uh, doesn't have it at least for now, but I mean, the fact that he just used it and he's 60% towards the... The best Al team of all time? Probably either 2020 Shock or 2021 Shanghai, I feel. The Hawkey boy, pretty good at the game. Oh, a lot of pressure being put down now, and you can see this widow. Is Gator a top five coach? Absolutely not. No, but they can't contest the cart like this. And so Pelican is getting incremental. Ah, this is just don't do it to him. That is extremely nerdy. Extremely nerdy, he says. What does everybody make her dream? Is it just have a shield in front of you? Yeah, this is just a steamroll. I'm disappointed. I was praying that M80 would struggle. My wishes were not granted. I am sad. And eventually, M80 get another Flux, another fight win as a result of it. It's free kills for the Widow, I guess. But this has been a drubbing so far. Uh, even though we aren't seeing kind of the typical happy pop off on the Widowmaker, you can got Pelly with the Outlaws Tracer as well, based. Like you call it out, the pirates in pajamas they can't peek, they can't hit the high ground, they can't look anywhere because they're so scared to pop their heads out. Pelican now can drop down his own volition, find the optimal target for the pulse bomb. Perhaps the Casty wasn't it. I mean, I took Paris a five map banger with the shock and Sparkle having a crazy blade to win that series, so. Shock were never not competitive in 2020, that is for sure. Oh. Oh, hello. Good hell, good for Suzu. All right, immortality field rather from Anion. That's what keeps Chronic alive. Happy still getting kills, meanwhile, though. Bro, come on. This is just bullying now. Yeah, 2020 Sparkle was awesome. Insane carry antics from that guy. Goated individual performance. One of the best I've ever seen for a single tournament, easily. Yes, the widow is happy. Correct. Oh my god. By that rally stun from Brig, immortality food from Annie, and though comes out of the perfect time to stop the pulse bomb reprisal that was being threatened. 
M80, no ultimates to lean on right now, but he can say the same of the defenders. Quite a hearty exchange of those. Now it's going to come down to the individuals. Shriner Shield very, very low here, but Hawk also struggling to maintain a fighting position. And Stone now has the high ground. Sad that Glister on Shock didn't work out. Yeah, Glister is one of those guys. He had so much talent, but it just never worked out. It's a tragedy. Our 2021 Shock. Yeah. After what he did on London in 2020. Glister had so much potential. I remember people were saying, like, Glister's going to be MVP on 2021 Shock. It just wasn't meant to be, though. Unfortunate. Oh, that's so clever. Okay, immortality field there from ultraviolet gets him out of trouble. That 21 shock team was just weird. Their DPS line was a little all over the place. Oh yeah, true, Maddie. That Genji meta is the reason they won anything ever. If it weren't for that, they still would have nothing to their names. And honestly, that Genji meta is what helped, like, propel their record. They went on, like, a giant win streak, I remember. Like, I remember before that Genji buff happened, like, they were going map 5 with Boston. <laughs> they were, like, the worst team in the league. Oh, the double pulse! Well, I don't have to worry about hitting the gritty on string, because that will never happen. I also sometimes wonder how Exe would have looked on 2021 Dallas. Honestly, I think it was meant to be the way they played. Like, being that team that didn't do the hit scan, that found their own way to win. I think that's part of why they were so good. But can pirates do a little bit more than just fold back? They can afford to give some ground in fairness. That That's a fat flux. flux. Pretty darn good here. But the immortality field is going to come out of the prescribed time. Keep Hawk fighting fit. Good accretion. That buys Hawk enough room here to at least secure the trade of Sigmas. Very, very low though his liar. Has to keep that shield up now. Shield pack being given over towards Pelican. Stone is looking healthy enough. Playing from behind his own brig as well. It might be the Ryan Sig meta was hilarious. That Cassidy is going to get supercharged. It's Liar falling first and it was Stone to open up the fight. Pulse was there, but not an issue as the round had expired. M80 stopped in their tracks. Yeah, I, that's what I think made that Dallas team so special. They found ways to win by innovating with symmetric comps and getting creative. I love that Dallas team. That was a special roster. Unless you can throw five ultimates at that fight and sweep away the competition. So the fact that they got stopped there was a bit of a death sentence. But now they get a chance to see if they can pull hold, maybe. No, I think you pointed out like the Widowmaker was really just not gaining them any traction in that last phase of the map. So you have like you have some high ground you can play, but how many times did we watch? Happy having to aim vertically down <laughs> to, to, to make use of that position. Oh, also, the reason that Matt is not on broadcast is he's currently going from Australia back to the US. I believe he was spending time in Australia with his wife, as she is Australian. So, you know, you've got to take the dumps where you can find them. And maybe you should still be pleased enough with this, but this definitely... Spend time with his wife and her family, I'd assume. We know pirates are good enough to at least get to that phase of the map. Or a lot of teams struggle. I know what that's like to travel that far, so... Hope he's doing all right. In that last round. They did. I think that defense, especially knowing how much time they had to... Oh yeah, it's clear that Exe wasn't the same player. It was clear Hydron was better for the team back then. As we do see the symmetric teleporter to help get Pirates of Pajamas out of spawn. But Pelican's on the Torbjorn once again. That's going to be the big difference. I mean, like, I doubt that's where Exe wanted to be. Like, he just picked where he could be, and that was that. Back to the Torb, by the way, based. 
Like, I can't even be mad that the Goat Magic Meatballs team is losing like this. Pelicans playing Torb out here, man. Points where it was the season actually watched the most of. I think Dallas Shanghai Robert was quite epic, although the meta was questionable. I thought 2021 was kind of cool because in a lot of instances you kind of just played what you're good at. That Dallas Shanghai rivalry is top tier though. Oh, Hawk gets rocked. Get him. Press the W button. Oh, that's a window. Now you don't. Uh, leave now. <laughs> that is a really awkward angle for a window. but they still are not able to get past this choke. So even though Hawk wasn't able to land the Gravitic Flux, everybody- Most watched season was 2018. Yeah, I miss 2018. I miss it all the time. I don't give a damn if the skill level is lower. That was peak for me. Which, as you can imagine, would be extremely nasty if it got thrown into that choke. But the rally's also really important. There's a stun aspect that can, you know, give you Back then, there was so much positivity in life, and everything wasn't always so depressing. The Cassidy slow, and of course, this Torb, which has been a real nuisance. Yeah, either way, I think, like, as a Tracer, you're not feeling super great, even though... I love this turret setup, though, by the way. On the taxi, it's, like, such a silly turret placement. I enjoyed 2019 as well. Goats did overstay its welcome, though. I agree. At least in stage three, more teams started to do like the ball DPS stuff, like Shanghai and you know Chengdu, of course, and a couple others. Valiant were playing Somber Goats. Oh my God, we are brawling over here. Yeah, I agree. These are played somber goats or ball comp, yeah. Luminosity defeated Timeless Dino. Bit of a upset there. Luminosity were underdogs. Timeless were seen as the number two NA team coming into today, so pretty big. Is that a Paris Eternal skin Magic Meatball? Come on, we can do better than that. It irked me. Philly kept card ban Zarya for three stages. Yeah. Philly's one of those teams I kind of wish would play more of the DPS stuff. I mean, career wise, definitely sugar free. Get the Sills out to a comfortable two map lead. I also wish that Fraggy played during Goats, man. Even if the Philly were still like not that good at Goats, it would have been hilarious to see the Rhine God himself play in Goats. I think a lot of people expected this looking at this matchup, not because Pirates and Pajamas are bad per se, but M80 is just so good. They are such a clean team. They are filled with so much star power. It's hard to feel like many teams can hold a candle to them. Yeah, I mean, this is like, this is not the stage of the competition where we really expect... Yeah, Hawk is dominating. This is a completely different M80 team from yesterday. That is for sure. They are locked in today. M80 were questionable in their match yesterday. It's, it's almost just like a, a check for, you know, M80 to go righto. Uh, you know, you need to get out of this group to be part of the main event. It's something we expect, but we're going to be scrutinizing your play to see if there's a meta shift. I thought the stars were going to align, man. They're just this, not. This suits them. Everything about this suits them, right? Hawk what team had the highest total player signed in Owl history? I don't know. 
It's hard to say. There's a couple teams that are probably in contention for that. Sparker, they usually had a pretty massive roster, so they're going to be up there, surely. M80 seems scarily inconsistent. Yeah, that's how it goes right now, though. Yeah, Spark had so many players every single year. But having like, you know, a significantly large amount of damage dealt over the course of the game, it sort of really adds up. And I think that's also an advantage we saw derived by M80 while they were able to pummel. I'm also just trying to think of teams that like would rebuild their roster every year. Like Toronto. Like, you know, Dallas for a long time were constantly rebuilding their teams. Spark are probably the answer though. Prime Chengdu racked up the players real. The 2023 Spark just didn't care about regular season games, I swear to God. They're also inconsistent on dive. But maybe there's a strategy where they could try and overrun this, like by using a Sim TP and not having to opt into what feels like a game that really suits M80. All right, we'll see what happens here. This is when M80 started to struggle yesterday. It all started on New Queen Street when they lost to Unking. is getting through that laundry room. You don't want to walk straight forward because of the high ground pressure that you felt from the train car. Every team has to walk into that if you're going to see... Yeah, outside of like 2023, Spark always had absurdly big rosters. So that's not really a great feeling either. So yeah, with the Symmetra Teleporter, you should be able to bypass all of that even if... The teams with a lot of money are like the best shouts. The guys that are going to sign a lot of people every single year. Because they can... Shock have got to be kind of up there as well, I feel like. They always had a lot of players. The problem is they always had a lot of the same guys, so it's probably not them. Spark is probably the answer, though. You know, like, they're not playing Tracer right now. That means that our backline maybe, you know, stands to suffer a lot less pressure, a lot less harassment. You know, with the, with the healing resources for our backline is being freed up, maybe that allows, like, you know, uh, Baptiste play to, to sort of, to level up maybe there's more we can do to add to the damage in this regard so i kind of get it. oh you know i was gonna go look at their liquipedia page see their list of former players but seems like it's broken so that's cool Either way, new Queen Street. Uh, disgusting. Yeah, yeah, a little. Uh, yeah, the new Queen Street coming up here. Uh, and again, it is M80 looking to secure their... Would you prefer a team that is consistent, but no X Factor in tournaments, or the inverse? Two games basically making their lead unassailable. Um, personally, I like... The consistency factor. Like, if everyone can be a contributor, then you can maybe still win. I don't like having an X factor and then everyone else all over the place. That's when you lose games in frustrating fashion. Consistency is the key. Whenever you say Unk Ink, I can't help but think of like Unkabunka. Yeah. Yeah, Spark had three insane playoff runs. 19, 22, and 23. Never mind. Why are they doing that to me? Oh yeah, Spark for like the awesome underdogs, of course. <laughs> Hearing Uber say Unkink is hilarious, it is. I have no idea what you're talking about, Vulcan. Not a single clue. You should wait, Doom. I mean, maybe next year. I bet you it was his face at name or something like that. And it like, <laughs> might have, you know, he might have signed out with that name and it could have done something again. I'm not really sure, but it, it's kind of funny. <laughs> Happy, fair enough, mate. You be That's true, Booming Bob. Oh, oh okay. In trouble there. Dude, I swear if it happens again, is that maybe going to get boomed on New Queen Street for the second day in a row? Gets knocked off the map on the jab spin. I think you just have to be so careful if you're gonna play the Sigma Pokemon versus the Arisa, because what the Arisa provides is just like straight. Momentum. Yeah, they are absolutely trying to say his username. To make sure that you're able to keep that front line super strong against the Sigma, but like the Sigma only has a shield that can go so far. I'm not sold on the Sigma on New Queen Street, not at least against the Arisa, right? Hawk did play this yesterday. Uh, 
All right, guys. I, I'm sorry. I don't understand your reference. Please. I think that's part of it, but also they just were... They're kind of mentally not always all there, Jogo. And they were lazy in playoffs. She didn't want to practice Kiriko, so that helps as well. Uncom I'd say common ATPL, but that's just me. He can also play the tracer, which is really nice to have against a team that's also going to be relying Reiner on. Reiner also did get boomed pretty hard. This is true. Really impressive with the tracer Actual paper mache types of mental. To, like find those successes weaving through this brig shield bash, the accretion from the Sigma, the, the mag grenade from the Cassidy. There's a tough ask here out of stone. Right, he just called me a peasant, bruh. Well, I never watched Emperor's New Grove. New Grove. I'm happy to see the mirror come out here, but this Sigma setup doesn't have the room that they needed to have. They might be like, pra honestly, they might be practicing comps that they intend to implement once Pelican and Happy are off. off oh yeah, Shu was better at Kiri in 2023, but well, we're talking 2022, he didn't practice Kiri for playoff meta. The San Diego Hunters would never reach those levels of mental boomage. Absolutely. San Diego Hunters don't need to worry about their mentals being boomed because we think we're the GOATs no matter what the outcome is. Twilight was just consistently good at like everything. On a god, like he he was always a very great player. What was the gap between him and Fielder? I mean, they were pretty similar. Ah, but he creates space, so all good, right? Having pops in and I, pirates in pajamas, yeah, I mean, they, they can't challenge that, that's fine. Wow, Korean players being wrong about him at a color be surprised. your progress to try and at least get back to parity here. The air matrix, though, that was the real threat, not the dead eye. Oh, sorry? Just turns around and punches him in the face. Nice. And got punched from the future? Dude, I loved Twilight. That guy was hilarious. Mm, I like that. Yeah. yeah it's got, it's he was so it. good. I, I like so it. good, yeah, man. It's the new collab from Overwatch 2, Sneak Peek. It's honestly it's not fair that he got to go to Shock after the whole Vancouver <laughs> dilemma. Like, what the hell, man? I'm very excited. <laughs> oh, dear. Hey, matey, back it up here. Just out towards the side of this little... The San Diego Hunters have never been reverse swept. Oh, nice stick, Pelly. Okay. Probably not, Jogo. Checkpoint achieved. Yeah, yeah, they, they got the checkpoint. A and it's so sad because Parrot and Pajamas really Korea cares about how much they can play dive in one series. That is such a real and true statement. Korea cares about the meta when it's dive. True. Square one uh, for both of these teams if we start to fight over the midpoint. There's one ultimate online that's going to be chronic with the overclock. But I feel like M80 Bernard, for sure. Oh, Strider, what happened there, man? Yeah, Chronic hoping to intervene here with his overclock, but there's no way he's going to get room only enough to cover over that loss of the Orisa. 
Pirates of Pajamas really held their own at the start of this map. In fact, they were leading at some points, but these last... And then there's Rush who tries to turn Ryan into a dying hero. Oh my lord, Strider dead again before he even get a chance to. Now it's looking bad. Sag. I was wrong, Chad. I was praying to the Lord we'd have a crazy series. I made it. I've woken up. I mean, with three minutes left, uh, there isn't too big of a gap right now between these two teams. I think that Pirate Pip can really get themselves back into it. But still has got to hit these shots. We've got to see Strider just keep walking forward. I mean, there's a simple way to make Ryan playable. Just make him very overpowered on purpose. I mean, they like to do that from time to time with some heroes. How about it's Ryan's turn to be super overpowered for no reason? Happy is playing. He is the Cassidy. He is on an ult account. Strider is not having a good time. Shout out to Hawk with the Valiant Orisa skin. At least I think that was a Valiant Orisa skin. What can they do to make him overpowered? A lot more shield health, uh, more damage, more damage resistance, I don't know, more everything. Just like purposely make him broken. <laughs> Ryan's pin becomes an insta-kill upon touch. Okay, yeah, that would be insane. Then we'd be inspiring all kinds of shenanigans, though. Like all sorts of brain-dead charges in hopes of getting that one shot. Oh, man. Make Ryan walk at 200 speed. All right, Pip needs to have something clean here you keep up your tank oh my god strider is just constantly low please keep him alive uv where are we going kill the lamp kill the lamp Give Ryan two charges, imagine. That'd be kind of sick, actually. There's only a minute left. Yes, Pirates and Pajamas are going to be able to get this checkpoint finally. Yeah, Ryan was a hero meant for like six years ago, unfortunately. This is still doable for Pip uh, Cart. Any Cart touchers? Any Bot touchers? There we go. No way, dude. Are they going to choke this? I don't think they can touch. Can they? Oh, no. They have the speed. They might be able to, but this would be an ugly engage. Oh, they got it. Oh, it's so close. And they don't have any ults. They got to hope for a miracle kill here. Oh my god, it happened again. Dude, they, they got boomed on New Queen Street again. Pirates in pajamas are still alive. This is unbelievable. Brother. The top three teams in EU are Space Station, which is just London Spitfire, Ents, and Twisted Minds. London Spitfire, Funny Astro, and Psycho, I should say. You've run eight fire strike charges. You know what? You're onto something there, Penguin. There isn't a checkpoint, and you have to wait. Then we don't see this like reckless push from M80. This is. I'm kind of terrified. This is like a spitting image of their game yesterday. They look really good on the first two maps, and then they choke New Queen Street. It happened again. Can you play the Torb? Like, like, do you feel confident being able to play the Tracer? <laughs> Everything's gonna choose New Queen Street against M80, real. Hold on, chat. I'm gonna use the bathroom super duper quick while we wait for this next map. I'll be back in just one second. Yeah, look, this might be about as exploitable as M80 are ever gonna be. So if you're pirates, you see that blood in the water, 
Yeah, you know that this might be the time to strike. This would be massive for them. I mean, in, in terms of like how their seating is going to be set up for, you know, the main event. And that stuff really, really matters. But look, just a generally very strong showing on this map. I thought Stone was really good. And Ian finds mm -hmm. such an important pick in that last fight. So she opens up with a with a kunai headshot kill. Hawk is terror searching, like kind of off the point. It doesn't find any value. M80 are they're, they're desperate. They've run, they've run out of time here, and it's hard. This is hard to do what Pyrus just did. Like they stay in control over the map, mentally speaking, right? And even when they fall behind, they know they have a checkpoint. They know they can play off that. They just need a good fight, and they manage to find it at the perfect time. Super good positioning really heads up play as well they just kind of keep their cool i do think something that m80 struggled with is playing the sigma comp it was too slow it was taking so long to get this composition set up or to have a happy and pelican on the right angles in order to take advantage of that sigma shield and by the time we ended up seeing hawk actually switch over to the orissa i felt like it was a little too late uh, being able to actually get that ultimate rotation and find the meterage advantage I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, I mean, like, the Sigma objectively is just, like, isn't... It's not good in that matchup, right? There's just, like, no way you can keep your shield up for any length of time. It just gets chewed to pieces immediately. So you don't want to be, like, rotating your cooldowns every single time you see the Orisa and having to, like, kinetic grasp and just have her look at you yeah. funny while you get no value out of it. It's, like, really easy to... to okay, we good now. ...all the time. Uh, and if you have a good enough mobility, then you can just pound their backline over and over. So we know why Hawk had to switch... We're locked in. ...on Orisa. It's fine. M80 is basically like two different variations of Atlanta Rain and happy with Liar also not doing anything. <laughs> nice. when it comes to maybe like Arisa games that look like that where he kind of struggles to... I think Suravasa is where we went in their game yesterday as well. And that was a 3-2 on Suravasa for M80. So, oh boy. We're reliving the same dream. Here we go. Come on, Pirates. Please give me a map five. I'm begging. Please, it would be so funny be something to keep an eye on here and you don't want to be letting this one go all the way i think they did they did play suravasa yesterday they right? did and they did win but it was a three two Ooh, versus okay. unk uh so Unking. what yep. <laughs> to, to unk incorporated um but yeah it was it was a three two played with the orissa composition with like tracer soldier and kiriko and lucio and after a certain amount of time, Hawk did switch over to the Winston, which is able to close out that map for them. But if it's the Winston, then I ponder, why not the Doom? I think Dante and the boys did Hawk indeed push Timeless, back. yeah. I forgot to change the title, thank you for uh, reminding it's, me. It's fine here, I think, like, trying to deal with Orisa with Fortify up is really punishing for Doom. If you actually, I think if you punch into it, she has Fortify, you might be in trouble. Uh, getting, getting caught out, that would be pretty bad, and it's really easy to interrupt you with that javelin now why is winston better it's kind of a good question right i think like primal rage offers you some unique opportunities on certain flashpoints but i would expect players to trend more towards doom in that case but here we are we have the sigma now these points like you have more pitched battles at the start of these flashpoints so maybe there's a chance to to be oppressive with this poke setup but eventually uh the orisa is going to step up and demand your attention Orisa just collapses on you, and that's the big problem about the Sigma Shield is you want to be able All to right. get around it and just be able to use that as That is not an ideal speed, start. But it's down already. Like, yeah, I mean, I think you hit a big accretion uh, just now on Strider. That was big and that didn't really allow Orisa to command any space for that short window. I think Magic Maple just oh, gets anyone back. got hers? If w? Sojourn play is sick, then it won't really matter what the tank matchup is. Like, it's going to be up to Happy here to, to, to find these rail connections and punish. Because Chronic doesn't have a shield to play from behind. No, and, and so now you you have to just play around the natural architecture of the map, which is not always the easiest thing to do. You're so vulnerable, especially if your back is turned and Pelican is looking at you. It can be tough to actually find the angle that you want to have. Uh, and similarly, if you have the Sigma shield that you are playing around... Uh, you have to also try to find a way to hit past it. Oh. Nice. That's huge. Rip. Alrighty. Last fight territory for this round, and they, they're getting poked as they get pushed out here. Oh, boy. I mean, the poke up not great at chasing these kills, right? But they'll get some free ult charge. There has certainly been a big tank diff in this series. I agree with you there. 
Cappy gets to walk away with the overclock by the time that Pirates of Pajamas have rotated around. Uh, so uh, this is not a fun experience for Pip to have to walk into. Oh, and that so should do it for that round. Okay, so we have a we have a gap here. I think uh, both DPS roles in this early phase of the map. That's definitely getting getting sort of pretty nasty. I think at the start of these fights, we see some great rail guns from Happy Pelicans able to confidently, brazenly take that one v one and win it out. We did see a flip back by Pirates of Pajamas though, which is the only reason why we're still here. But that's about to be rectified. All right. Well, that's going to be flashpoint number one. Ence's weak point. I don't think they're the greatest dive team, personally. So many ultimates to work with here too. Like the fact that they have the sound barrier online, it just feels really nice to have against something like the Terra Surge. Yes, you have the Suzu as well, but it feels like a nice extra fail safe to have in a matchup like that. The big difference here is also I'm questioning their flexibility right now. Something the Terra Surge. Both of these tanks have to play so differently around these all. Like today, they they were just like wholeheartedly stuck on Arissa for the most part. Like Hawk used it, and here it's similarly powerful, right? Uh, there's nothing worse than you know having a group up to play on a flashpoint like this and just getting caught inside. Gun, but that's a crazy thing to say, Brian. My God. Chronic is gonna keep M80's heads ducked. Okay, he's the flux though. That's right, we turn this around. My goat magic mateball to the rescue with the sound barrier. <laughs> what do you mean, Shumongus isn't in your top three EU teams? Um, they're my secret best team, but I'm just... I don't want to reveal all of the, the important information to the people. They have to find out for themselves. SK is going to go crazy tomorrow. Against uh, Super Shy. Watching SK play against Funny Astro and Lucio 1v1 was awesome content, by the way. Will linger because he kind of has to, but M80 aren't in a position to flip this with three. It'll just be Pelican sent ahead. All right, well, I, you, you gotta take. <laughs> All right, well, you just need to win the one. It's <laughs> a lot easier said than done here, especially when you got just one all. And OWCS. So glad we avoided that. And maybe also have a chance to come back into this one as a team of five to play around that sound barrier advantage. But they didn't need it in that first fight. It almost feels better to have it now. Yeah, I want to see a proactive beat here from Liar. Push into the entirety of Pirates if you can. Magic Maple's very low. Okay, so we're going to start with the continuing rush, which is fine. It's going to draw that out of Alien as well. Good okay, that's what you want if you're Pip. On Magic Maple, and here's the beat to okay, I, I don't think you need to use that. But... It's okay, I guess. Stone, though, hard to catch. Playing inside the disruptor shop for a time here. You should have time for one more. Magic Maple is a sound barrier. But I may still have three ult, so it may not even matter. No, it's amazing. I, and this is kind of what you are hoping to see from a team like M80. Uh, also a big turnaround from what we ended up seeing on New Queen Street. Uh, but... Here we go. A couple of percentages left. Uh, Pipper gonna come back in to try to recontest this. But with That's what you need. M80, don't even... M80 got the exact pick they needed on Magic Maple, so yeah. That is happy, yes. Wait, they're turning though. Cro Chronic with was that a three K? Let's go. They turn that. Magic Maple gets back in time. The Lucio rollouts go crazy. I low key need to make a command for Happy. So like exclamation mark Happy. Yes, that is Happy. <laughs> you after losing Maple so early and so it's all tied up going over to the next flashpoint I'm really looking at M80 to see if they can turn the tide with this Arisa composition the Arisa versus versus Arisa has looked to be in Strider's favor as of right now and we're going over to yet another tiny flashpoint Hawkey playing in the corner this makes it a little bit hard to poke him down from all of these little hidey holes that the, this point features 
Force a recall there on Stone. It ends up being quite close by. Stone wasn't overly mobile before Hawk turned up, but we didn't even see any of Hawk's teammates there. They were not really within their vicinity. Yeah, Magic Meatball is what you say, Meme on the guy. He's actually not bad. comes to this Arisa composition. They have, uh, whether or not it's been Strider creating more space, I think Chronic as well has really been able to get the better of some of this backline of Imedi and really opening things up for Pip to play a bit more aggressive. I think, uh, too, to Annian's credit, she's been doing- Yeah, Stone's had some pretty good pulse bombs in this set, I feel. I'm sure that, uh, you have the Suzu online for those critical moments. 41% in counting, that's just a huge buffer build off that one fight win. Ultraviolet, gonna have to go for it here. Gatsune rushed to Floyd. They kind of zero in on Strider at the start of that fight. Who's had to use his fortify all <laughs> You said go wrong. Yeah, my bad. That zoning Suzu, or not Suzu, uh, Curio is pretty good though. Can't really keep that pressure going, but M80 use that opening to at least flip the point in their favor. Pip have good resources here though. They, they shut to play this smart. You have the point. Play around the corners, play around these walls. Magic Maple, keep him up. Yes. Become defensive as Anion starts sending those kunais in. One of them slips through the net apparently. And once more, Pyrus in control here. God, threatening to push this to a map five against M8. That would be absolutely wild. But frankly, it's on the table here and now. It is, and at this point too, you can see Pyrus just chased out. And I like this. Good aggression. Don't even give them a chance. Eat up all that space. Point. They have a chance here. Point. I follow. Yeah. Yeah. We still have to work yeah. on that one. I think we all have to work on that one. <laughs> I'm okay with. I'm okay with map point. How would you break owl players into generations? All right. Yeah. I feel like season one was kind of its own thing. They have been hitting beautifully. And like season two and three. You know, we kind of alluded to it. Kind of its own thing. You might even say one and two together if you want. Kind of jump the. Oh wait, uh, I kind of jumped the gun with that one. It's all good though. All good. Get all these kills still. Hell yeah. But it's down to three here. Magic Maple falling. Hawkdown needs a lot of healing. He buys a little bit of space now, but eventually is brought down as Strider comes crashing into it with his own javelin. Speed. God, saying Generation 2 play. We're, uh, it makes me think we're talking about them like they're Pokemon or something. God. <laughs> Violet is a Gen 2 Pokemon, don't you know? Al Season 2 is the Johto region, man. Just how much healing she's been pumping out into the team and the damage. Uh, it's gonna feel nice to have that online to potentially close out this map. People only need one more fight here if they're dragging out. Almost the sixth sense leads Happy to sort of preemptively slide away from that javelin. Okay, don't just win a ball from that explosion. But it's all follow up damage where that came from. Oh, gets nothing with that. Oh, oh no, stone goes down. No, no. Wait, but Anyun! Fighting chance here, but it's just Hawk. Hang on, this is dangerous now. Pyrus could look to try and end the map here. Hawk can't even flip the point into his team's favor. Liar has to get him back in the Oh, Raz is peak Pokemon? Well, you you haven't lived then, if you think that's peak Pokemon. I think the whole team is screwed. Uh, so go into overtime here with a little bit more reinforcement. They do get the point back, and this is where Pip recognizes they have to back up. Because they have <laughs> that mean insult to Violet being the Jota Pokemon unless he's Tyranitar? I mean, he might as well be Tyranitar. The only thing they have to really worry about here is Pelican's Pulse Bomb. Man, the composure it takes to know you're on the precipice of beating a team. Okay, stop, Penguin. No. <laughs> Bad. Set up and you know you have... You know, a couple now I hope pirates lose this game because you said that. <laughs> and it is on bird ring. I don't think so. Let's see just how hard pirates in pajamas can press down on that. We have a possible here for Pelican. Both teams have a sound barrier, so much will come down to the timing and execution of those. Pelican. Okay, he's gonna draw a Suzu out. He's probably happy enough with that here, even if not getting the kill on Strider. There is a Terra Surge to worry about, and Strider's gonna go for it right now. Ultraviolet's able to swift step away, but Happy gets wrecked by Chronic. Sound barrier from Meatball's good! Up in mid -air, but still has a of oh these my god. Away. It's happening. We're going to map five, baby! Let's go! 
Yes, sir! Pirates in pajamas are still in this one. I knew it. I knew it, Chad. I knew it. I didn't know it, but I knew it. <laughs> between these two teams. I think when you look at this matchup, everyone's like, oh, M80. Like, I would love to know what the chat predictions for this one. Because I think it's like- Has Magic Maple boomed M80? But a five map series? This has been a Peak Pokemon for me is Gen 3 through 5, personally. What went down yesterday, though? Like, with a very similar map pool, you know, between Unkink and this M80 team, probably might have- I mean, there's a couple reasons that Brennan Sideshow went to Valorant. Didn't get the contracts they deserved. But also, I think Brennan in general was losing interest in Overwatch from what I what I can recall. Aw, Necro's holding her puppy. Pupper! If you want. It's also quite hard to exploit that in many parts of this map. Teams have tried to play like that hard dive look, but I think right now that's hard to make happen. So there might be, a, you know, they might be avoiding execution M80 here by being able to go back to what has worked for them so far. But man, Pokemon community is wild. They throw around Gen 1 or like it's a racial slur. Yeah, I, some people are so toxic with that. I get it. Charizard gets too much love. But like, come on, man. Gen 1 is what started it. I mean, I think, you know, the, the actual Gen 1 games are, you know, they're vintage, they're classic, but they're not the greatest game mechanics wise. That's for sure. It's looked so smooth today, and this is not, uh, we didn't get a chance to see her too often. And I'm a Gen 1-er, but for the Gen 3 games, Fire Red and Leaf Green, those are my favorites. My favorite Pokemon? I am a bit of a loser, I am a Charizard guy, but I am partially biased towards him because he was my first Pokemon. The Charmander Evolution line was my first ever Pokemon, so. There's a lot of sentimental value with Charizard for me. Hawk seems to be constantly giving ground, constantly being forced to use his defensive cooldowns earlier than he otherwise would like. And even something is pedestrian. It's my first Pokemon, first Pokemon I trained to level 100. So, that comp, now we know Pirates of Pajamas, very good there. The better team on that comp. None of the Pokemon games have very complicated mechanics. No, but Gen 1 had some very weird mechanics. so wide. They're gonna have to go... That, like, just don't make any sense. They could sort of maybe you know, play to the topography a little bit more with way, gen 4 is based i love gen 4 dude we come back from this you can play a home game until you're 19 man penguin that's rough because genuinely gen 3 was my childhood gen 3 and gen 4 are my childhood Sapphire, Ruby, Emerald, Fire Red, Leaf, Green, like Diamond, Pearl, Platinum, and then Black and White was like when I was the most into Pokemon. Imagine playing VGC for a living and not being able to afford rent because you missed Stone Edge. I can't even imagine. Yeah, Gen 1 had something like crits were based on Pokemon speed. Not to mention that freaking mechanic with, uh, what's the move called? Bind? Where, and like, I think there was one like Clamp or something, I don't remember. But there was Bind where you literally could not attack for turns until it ended. Like, what kind of cheese is that? And I'm pretty sure you couldn't unfreeze. You could not thaw out if you were frozen in Gen 1. Like, naturally. Like, what kind of nonsense is that? And then, like, there was no physical special split or anything. So, like, freaking Mewtwo had, like, a billion special defense because his special attack was high. And then he's one of the fastest Pokemon in the game also. Like, him and Alakazam were busted. Psychic types did not have, like, any weaknesses, essentially. Aside from, like, Ghost, because Bug was just non-existent practically in that game. 
what the implications for competitive play might be with Ventures addition to the game. But for now, we turn our attention to this fifth and final map in a series that has gone in a direction we definitely didn't expect. M80, we're off to a strong start here. The Pirates in Pajamas have slowly wrested control back. Yeah, and Ghost moves were physical. Like, holy crap. M80 were a little shaky on... They ended up dropping... Oh, yeah, that's what it was. You're right. Psychic was immune to... Went to Ghost and Gen 1 because of coding mistakes. Like, all sorts of crazy things just made sidekick types busted. Alakazam and Mewtwo are so broken. Anything with high speed, honestly. Anything with ridiculously high speed and you're just winning. I wish Magic Maple plays in, dude. They aren't ready for that type of power, though, I don't think. They're not actually playing this, right? Surely not. Surely they're not betting it all in a map 5 with this composition, right? Surely not. Dude, there's no way. There's no way they're playing Zen Ball on Junker Town. This is insane. Let them cook, I guess. Here we go. Chronic is still gonna have to, you know, win the one v ones here against Happy, which what we saw in the previous map, that's very much within the realm of possibility. Frustrating for Hawk, who won't really know where to put himself. Look, knocked out into the open there. Strider being very disruptive. You don't have a Sombra, you don't have a Zenyatta here to deal with this wrecking ball, so Strider will be really hard to stop. And he got so low there, and you see how his. I think low key Jonek could have been a pretty nasty Kiriko. That seems like a Jonek kind of hero. Oh my god, wait, that Bionade! That Bionade was disgusting! Oh, Hawk lives that! That's insane that Hawk lives that! That nade from Anion was so good! How, dude? How does Hawk live that? To get through this choke. So, M80, despite looking a little bit shaky, have been able to hold their ground for now. And they're, again, they're predicting some of these angles from Strider quite well. <laughs> real Vulcan, real. This very good against this more static, grouped up, sort of set up from M80 that wants to keep you at arm's length. Oh, the Widow versus Widow duel, though. And Jonak is most certainly not the most overrated player of all time. He does get overrated by some people, but he is most certainly not the most overrated player of all time. Nowhere close. Chronic trying to channel his inner bird ring with that London Widow skin, I believe that was. Oh my god, these bio needs from Anyun have been disgusting. Anyun is cooking with this Ana. Is going to be more than enough for Strider to roll over the top of M80. They have a chance to make a yeah, I don't think anyone's rated Pine in about four years, to be honest with you. <laughs> I think that ship sailed after 2020. Oh, Pine was insane for his time, no doubt. You know, I was kind of worried pirates were cooking too much with this comp, but it might work. Use mines, do it. That's a nice minefield. Cut, cut, kill that brig. Kill that brig. Nice. There we go. Dude, when Dallas signed Pine but then never got to play him was so sad. Yeah, I... <laughs> oh, they're going Cass. Well, time to swap, boys. Yeah, yeah, I, like this. This is what it's just gonna be rock paper scissors here. I think the overlay was wrong, but they fixed it. Carpe's cast was also amazing in season one. Choices to be able to handle that first point. Widowmaker is gone. You don't have to deal with the happy Widowmaker anymore, and how you feel pretty good, I think, if you're Strider playing into this Arisa versus Sigma. It's worked out so many times already, forcing Hawk It can be really tough here. They've got to be able to get to this high ground, because Sake being able to set up shop here with all this poke can be terrifying. But they flipped the map, which is pretty ideal for them, I feel like. That was good. M80 are real far off now. Hawk's getting bullied. Nobody. I don't think I count anybody. 
I think maybe Strider got coin that and then was Suzu'd immediately and, and killed back up. Most underrated win of rank. Oh my god. Who ranked for like those four games, remember? On Vancouver. Classic. That is true. They didn't touch. Nope. They did not. Somebody's stuck. Pelican is stuck. Oh, God, what if I watch What is What is actually happening here? All right, we're watching M80 coming? crumble, is, yes. is what's happening. And it's nothing cheesy now, right? They've just gone back to the comp that's worked for them so well over the last couple of maps. BQB was so good at hit skin. His Ash, BQB's Ash in 2020 was nuts. The high ground. Isn't that accessible for defenders, or at least it's no more accessible than it is for pirates and pajamas. So Hawk now needs to match on this Arisa. He needs to hope that they are more coordinated than they were in Suravasa. Dead Eye buys a little bit of breathing room, some chance to sort of contemplate. Engagement beat is good. They get a kill there. Happy booped right off of the high ground. They look insane. I loved BQP's Reaper as well. His Reaper is Ash and Cass were really good. BQB was not a flashy player, but extremely consistent. You know what I always find ironic about BQB? He was known for his Sombra pre-Owl, and that's part of the reason he got signed, but his Sombra was never good in Owl. It was like so mid consistently. <laughs> He's dastardly for Happy, but eventually he'll be brought down in hmm, two minutes and eight seconds on the clock. Those are grim. It's probably Jogo, probably. That is if not one of the biggest disappointments. BQB's Ash was so good, dude. This is looking really good for Pip, by the way, chat. A two minute time bank on Junkertown is solid. I guess like Seeing the wrecking ball. This is looking good for them. They they might do this. They really might do this. The Sigma compositions because you know it's so predicated on just being able to stand where you want to and not be shifted and just be a bulwark for your 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 poke heroes. So Pirates and Pajamas don't respect this. I also think getting to see Arian on the Ana is great. Yaki's overrated, but he was an MVP candidate in season three. He just fell off hard. Yeah, he did fall off eventually. Yep. And MYXL. That's right. Like we, we definitely, we definitely hyped it up a lot in that era. But you saw like that that fight win. Strider gets Nano. And Ball and Matt Five can somehow lead to a win. I just think it's so crazy. We get to seeing, we get to see some Junker Town. And it's funny because before Season Four Mayhem boomed, they were actually still good. They had that really good first stage. And then they like won like two games the rest of the year. Tragic. Well, this is why NA is the worst region. Wrecking ball on defense is insane, by the way. It's wacko, but it could work. There's no, there's no switches coming out here from M80. Ah, wait, Hawk. Pause. Diva. You know, I actually think that's not a bad swap. I like these swaps from M80. Also, it's good that you're you're gonna play cast defensively instead of letting Happy get bullied on Widow by the ball. Get a little coordinated dive going on the Zen. All you got is an Ana to protect him. Or you can go after the Widow. Oh, Magic Maple diffs that fraud, Pelican. Oh my god, Magic Maple the Zen is cracked. Uh, but it was really cool to see him just kind of walk towards hip spawn and then come out. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, the M80 backline has not been great. But uh, I think the same problem remains as what you were saying is that uh, Hawk. I think Antiune's kind of been the star of the show this map so far. Her bionades have been perfection. Only the real ones remember asking. I haven't heard that name in a long time. Just as M80 getting hit by the wrecking ball 
uh, and the tray supply from M80 ball. That'd be so funny. No peel. Makes super hey, yo. Hard to how that plays out. The crossover move? I don't know why. I don't know if I agree with them swapping in the Widow, to be honest. Putting a lot of pressure here. Now down on Happy. He's going to have to take a moment, though, back away. Gets a little low. But that card, it's not leaving the choke anytime soon. No, it's not. We're going to hear what Pip, though, is, is kind of thinking about as they try to think about how to keep this card stopped. Happy, don't do it. Okay, they they killed the goat magic maple. It's too powerful. Remember Leaf, that other French player that was like really good in World Cup? I think Nana's in. I agree. Yeah, come under, come under. I have first touch. I have first touch. I have time. You have first touch. What do you think? What do you think? The left. Keep it close. They're looking at me. Yes, base. Yes, base. Push support on me. Yeah, I mean, you turn behind. You know what I mean? Oh, Gagari's the easy answer to that question, Eclipse. Oh, Pelican's had enough. Says, I ain't losing a pip. Don't say Don't say We can get out here. can get out here. No. That fight definitely not going the way that Pirates of Pajamas would have liked it to. But again, when you have to defend on this part of the map, bros, like it's right, going to the Arissa. Against the attacking widow. It's very difficult to do that. I think as Wrecking Ball two, you just don't nearly have as much point presence on that particular portion of point one. So Pipper, are you going to make the adjustment to put Strider back onto the Arissa that has been uh, so potent for them? And it feels nice that Union was able to. Now it's going to be a bit harder for Hawk and Pele to do what they want to do here. Those are two very valuable supportive ultimates that are now online for pretty treacherous second point. Can we switch to the POV? I'd like to see what's going on down there. Thank you. Oh, Magic Meatball's in trouble. It might be time to get off the Zen. I think it's probably time to get off the Zen. In my opinion, yeah. Okay. Just try to low enough, and there's actually a lot of value in Pelican sticking that beautiful, absolutely nailed Strider. That was gorgeous. And now this Tracer has no choice except to step out into the loving arms of Craggy. Yeah, Craggy was cracked. And so good stuff from M80 to really try to turn this around, but the Craggy, Kabaji, Defran. That was like the the trio back in the day. Those guys on the EU ladder. To try to match that and just have enough. Yeah, good times indeed, Penguin. You need to stall this, though. They don't have that much to work with. Stone needs to come up big here. Yes, Byron, that is true. Oh, oh boy. Magic Maple. <laughs> he got his. He got his one. Magic Maple does prevail. Gets to that second checkpoint. Uh, it, it was a valiant effort there by Magic Mayfall's Lucio, but ultimately the rest of the fight was happening. Crazy how 2017 was seven years ago. Please, man, stop. Uh, so now, hey, you know what? It's not a Overwatch didn't come on. It came on 2016, so it's even older than that. They are continuing to keep this card steadily moving forward. What this Diva has on the Sarissa is this high ground presence. Young Kib. <laughs> good Matrix from Hawk. Happy has moved on to the Sojourn and Orissa. I mean, that Orissa needs some help badly. Yeah, seems like Pip are a bit more uncomfortable in this setup. They're really benefiting from the Anyun Bionades, I feel. The follow-up they were getting on those were really good. The hog greats of Jonah and Vidoshin. Don't forget about Kareev and Taimu. Alright, we go into extra rounds. Or is M80 Choken coming? Chronic needs help desperately. That is a great dive. Pulse bomb, maybe? Not gonna even use it. Through that animation, not an easy thing to do, by the way. Without durable, the Arisa is there. 
Pelican's policy made it easy. Oh boy. Good old fashioned janitorial work. Oh, Pelican. And the Chronic will walk into it. Looks like, hey, mate, you're going to get the map done, but we're going to be running it back. That's wild that Pip. The magic meatballs dancing. Breaking ball shenanigans. But M80, well and truly keeping themselves in this game. Has to be a self suzy fight. Man, extra rounds it is. A one minute difference. Pirates of Pajamas still have that lead. They have the lead, and that's enough to comfortably have ultimates online. And so that's something that I think you, you, you're you really excited about having as an advantage. But M80 played with so much momentum. They just came out of the gate swinging with something like the D.Va right yeah. away. Yeah. NA's giving us some bangers today. This has been a solid day of groups chat. No matter the outcome here, we've had three map fives today, is it? Like, that it doesn't really get much better than that. Probably doesn't do them any favors when they're going up against an Arisa comp, but maybe they feel like they have the room to switch to mirror that. But Hawk will be on the Diva still, potentially. I don't know. Charger's thinking. Yeah, I don't know if we get the time heroes to mix with it. So the safest pick here for Strider is the Arisa, and that's where Pirates of Pajamas go. Well, the Arisa too. And for the second round, we'll head to Shambali. Please, no. It seems like they're going to play conservatively here. They're not going to risk it with the wrecking ball again. A known factor that you might be able to get the Terra Surge online. And Strider has been really clean with those when he's been able to actually land them onto the team. The difference is that Diva's not so easy to lock down. I think it's more safe to just avoid the ball here. It was like a bold strat that worked, but you know, after a few rounds, there's only like a minute on the clock. Don't give them a chance to snowball in overtime. And just get some scouting information to the team. Yeah, obviously, just like the mere presence of the widow makes it a little scary to push out into that cul de sac just in front of the first checkpoint. UV's gonna go into a Baptiste here. Oh, interesting. Like, obviously, it can be hard for the Baptiste here to heal the Diva consistently, but Ultraviolet doesn't want to play Ana here. Yeah, the Baptiste is nice because you Boxy, like the streamer Moxie? He still plays Overwatch, if that's who you mean. I still see him playing the game, like, daily. Engagement mechanism. Pelican, very wary of the oh, he's hunting him down. Oh, so close. He becomes a hunter. Pelican gets a good amount of damage. Can't quite complete the one clip here. Forces a defensive probe on the right hand side from Pirates in Pajamas. Chronic now definitely starting to feel the pressure a little more. Taking more defensive position on this high. Oh, big shot. Still, what a pick. Getting the Baptiste there is huge. Hey, yo. They did it. Wait, they're act they actually might have just won this series. With that kind of hold, they might have just actually won. Oh, my God. This is actually a thing. Can they get there? No, they can't. Oh, my God. Pirates in Pajamas might actually beat M80 chat. This is crazy. I have Penguin. They're hilariously cringe. Pirates in Pajamas, they, they did the hard work. The hard work would be trying to get a full hold on Junker Town. How many Dude, imagine getting reverse swept by Magic Maple. Holy. Honestly. It requires, yeah. and where do we see the teams where, like, one team is if I'm Pelican, I'm getting out of this team now. <laughs> it's overtime. There's less time to like fix your comp and make your push here. But you know, Pirates had the chance. They switched over to a wrecking ball probably just for the speed to come back. That one shot, Rose. Chronic smashing Ultraviolet there on some kind of wild flick towards the cart. I feel like that tilts things. I mean, two minutes isn't a lot of time, you but such a you've set yourself up healing. really you good here. Off the table, all the burst healing from the regenerative shot is just, it's, it's all gone. And so if you don't have that, I, I feel like the, yeah, the cards fall so fast, even though Strider is out of the picture. Uh, he was able to come back on the wrecking ball and respawns are just that much faster for the defensive side. It was a great pick, and then Chronic able to just keep that distance between himself and the rest of the team. It's interesting that M80 don't want to play either Orissa or Sig like they've been doing. It's interesting they're going to remain on the D.Va here. Happy though, still going to be more than happy to opt into that duel. I wouldn't have it any other way. Two minutes on the clock here. Chronic maybe was just baiting a shot there. Pirates in pajamas poised to win the entire series. With a compelling push on Junkertown. Chronic needs one pick. 
Widowmaker, one pick on the attack. Feels like it's the end of that defensive hold. So he's hunting for it, and we're gonna see stand still up until then. But this card has been allowed so much for- I mean, all it takes is one fight now at this point. Here we go. The attack could decide it all. It's been stone here is an easier time of getting to grips with the back line. He was spotted by Lyre briefly, though. Oh, and now the Stone is being a bit of a Oh, Pelican! What do you do with four players now? Pelican's on the hunt. Man, that was really nicely played. They have to, because if they get staggered, or if they give over any more ultimate charge. Still though, just the one fight. That's all you need. That's all you need, Pip. Just reset, quit staggering yourself, get out. Surefour does play Overwatch, still. He was streaming just the other day on Overwatch. It gets us down to under one minute. One good fight left for Pirates in Pajamas. Yeah, but Happy wants it. Chronic is gonna make a swap onto Cass. We're like, screw this Widow Duel. We're not going for it. We're just gonna play as a group. Maybe try and catch Pelican off guard here. Thirty seconds in a dream. Come on, Pip. No, Agilities is like MIA. I don't know what he's doing now. Allow you to blow up like a Kiriko if anyone's not going to be ready for this. Stone has to recall. He's been struggling against Pelican here. Who's stepped up Recalls from both sides. Here's a rush now from Ultraviolet. Gonna match Anion. Oh, Stone, can he do something here? Don't see nine. Don't see nine. Don't see nine. Oh my god. Magic Meatball's like one HP. They're not looking at him. Oh, the stick from Pelican! Oh, that's it. They choke. In the final hour, M80 decides not to lose to a random NA team. Oof, that was scary close. But they survive. 3 2 M80. Damn. They clutched it. They just couldn't get anything done there. They just needed one pick and they could not find it. Pelican was on Stone's case there. Pelican was all over that. He ain't losing to these guys. Hell no. Close game. Pip made it a good one, as they always seem to do in the groups. But M80 realized, you know, we, maybe we shouldn't be losing to a team with the amount of talent we have of, like that. <laughs> Damn. What a series. Almost reverse swept. But not quite. I'm glad I, I stuck with my gut, though, chat. 3-2-M80. Got it right. Pog. Quiet, frankly, shouldn't even or isn't really considered of the same caliber as they are. That will make me worry moving forward, and I think that's definitely something that other teams will be able to exploit. However, they of course. Oh man! What a match! In just a few days, Happy and Pelican will be joining this. We got two banger NA games today. Without having ping issues, I mean. Luminosity causing some chaos on the timeline. M80 almost losing to Pip. They're on ping, and that's something I think that we can't. Like, forget when looking Man. So, M80 are not going to have to play another round of the groups. They advance. They're done. They're chilling. That's it. What a match. Luminosity played timeless and they beat them. Oh, uh, yeah. I'd love to hear these comms. Let me hear. I gotta say, Pelican's pretty fortunate he hit that pulse. Because literally on the screen, Mapeball's like 1 HP and he went for the cast because that was the call. <laughs> oh my god, because they almost lost a bit. <laughs> Scary, I'm not sure. I thought I heard scary. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I, I hear what I want to hear. <laughs> uh, I want to call them bangers, more like travesty. <laughs> as well, uh, from the match in general, because there were plenty of moments uh, left and right with pop up situations on both of those squads. I am very, very impressed with what we've seen from the pirates in pajamas. I mean, look, I. 
I think that they didn't look great out of the game. Pick up Gita, oh god. Uh, Please not that. They are dealing with like, you know, a pretty strong comp. Which is like all right, chat, well that does it for all the games like today, it looks like. I'm gonna stream tomorrow. I don't think I'm gonna stream all the games, just like today. I think I'm probably gonna stream the first two EMEA games. Because uh, Shmungus, SK, ML7, and Boger's team play, so that could be fun. Good content. I'm probably going to watch the first EMEA game. It's Ataraxia and Peace and Love. Two solid teams. And then in NA, is there anything good happening in NA tomorrow? Is it worth my time in the slightest? Oh yeah, uh, students of the game play F My Chungus Life. Seekers team versus Rack Attacks team. That could be a good match. Even so, like, Still. it's definitely harder. Yeah. yeah Along with that, Citrus Nation play Daybreak, and then who is Goldfish play Visor? Oh, God. So it's looking like only one good NA game tomorrow, probably. I mean, Daybreak and Citrus could be a good match. I don't know. We'll see. But I do feel like, Mitch, as you mentioned, should be fun. We'll see what happens. But yeah, I'm done though, chat. Hope you guys had fun. Did a bit of a double header stream today. I'll be back again tomorrow. Have yourselves a good rest or have a good rest of your day or night wherever you are. I appreciate you all for the support and peace out. Thank you, Maddie, for the 17 months, by the way. I appreciate you.